is the City of Flint's City Council Meeting. Presented by Spectacle Productions, determined to make a difference. And underwritten in part by Local 370 Flint, Michigan, United Association of Union of Plumbers, Pipe Fitters, Welders, and Service Techs. Pipe Fitters Union has entry level careers available and they're available at 810-720-5243. City of Flint, City Council Meeting. Up next. One resolution that was postponed from the April 18th meeting. Resolution 180195, reprogramming of unspent home investment partnership program home dollars um, to Community First, Genesee County Land Bank, PK Housing, Genesee County Habitat for Humanity. Okay. Councilman Guerra. I make a motion that we set a one eight zero one nine five council. There's a motion, Ms. Worthy. I am second that. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair, I ask that May. this be postponed to um, special affairs. I hear my colleagues moving on it, and um, that's fine and okay. But I ask that it be postponed to special affairs and through you to uh, Ms. Wilcott. The reason I asked is because this is on spent home dollars. And um, I had asked some questions about, you had said everybody who applied got what they wanted. I asked who had some got more or less. In other words, when I see unspent home dollars, I look at things that I've talked about, particularly at my ward, as basements that's sitting there, demos that need to be done. Could this money have it been used for that? Um, thank you, Councilman. You um, you asked several questions. I did provide I did provide you with some information earlier today uh, via email. <clears throat> you did ask that question that night as well as to whether the dollars could be used for demolition. And as I shared that night, demolition is only eligible with home funds as a component of a larger housing project. So demolition, standalone demolition for foundations, et cetera, is not a home eligible expense. You also um, communicated that home repairs and things of that nature were eligible so if they come to a group I suppose it would be somebody to have that, that for, for humanity. I know Clint Smith is gone. But those dollars were available for those type of activities under those type of um, situations that would be a fair state. Correct. And so, Suzanne, when we talk about unspent home dollars for so many months, you know, and then we hear these are the unspent dollars, we haven't had any back and forth input on it. And um, that kind of bothers me. What would you say to a guy like me who thinks he feels like that? As I, you asked me to vote for these home dollars for this specific reason that's been put together. Um, some of your questions uh, you're reiterating from Wednesday night, I, I uh, understand that. These are dollars that have actually been applied for, as you identified. So we have gone through um, several exercises over the past couple of years to, be, um, to look at our home program, to evaluate our housing investment strategy, and make recommendations for funding. So some of these dollars are actually have been uh, have been funded through previous action plans, but as we finalize our housing investment strategy, we've had additional requests for additional funding. Um, you may remember um, what happened with the kind of tax um, tax market after the presidential election. Some of the um, projects that were previously rec uh, recommended for funding lost value in those. Um, 
in those uh, allocations, and so we've had to reevaluate because they had LIHTC credits, and actually MISHTA opened up additional rounds of funding for some of those projects if the city committed to additional investment, which we did. And so what you have in front of you is kind of an analysis, I would say, over the past couple of years of our home program while we work to clean up um, our home program. These are, these are allocations that are recommended for a variety of reasons. So there has been a lot of internal discussion and a lot of applications that have been submitted. And so we're at a point now where we can allocate funding, I think, that's appropriate to these projects that have actually requested it. And just to address one more um, question that you asked at council, you wanted to know if they had, um, if they were awarded the full amount of funding in the response that I provided you today, there is a spreadsheet, <coughs> there's a, um, there's an email, I have, um, I'm hoping you've seen it. No, but I have, but I usually look at a hard copy if you send me an email, it's probably best to call it to my attention or to the secretary, but you don't have to. Okay. I'll get a chance to see it, it might be after the fact, but I'll look at it. I did send it, um, I sent it to Council of Clerk and S. Brown, and I also uh, forwarded it to Janelle. Um, yeah, we'll probably, we probably got it. You, um, I did try calling you, just to uh, clarify. I, I did try calling you, and your voicemail was full. Um, I listen to voicemail. My voicemail said, call me back. I did. You did I tried that, too. <laughs> I did. I called yeah, a couple times. I was really good for four years getting calls and talking to people. Yeah. So no, I, I, I get that. I did I did back. attempt. That's what it said. <laughs> but I did want to, um, so in the spreadsheet, and you can have my copy once I'm, I'm finished with this, um, but in the spreadsheet, there were several questions that were asked, and so, um, as I said, one of the questions was how much did each organization apply for and did they get the full amount of funding? I said I did not believe so at council, but I would provide that. And so the spreadsheet that you can have actually identifies, it's a chart, and it actually identifies how much um, how much each organization applied for and what they were recommended for funding. And no, um, most of the organizations did not get their full amount of funding. Um, Suzanne, I'm a pretty reasonable guy in my mind. And, um, you know, I protect my reputation as far as people trying to get in touch with me. That's why I put the voicemail, call me back. I rarely get complaints that people can't catch me. So we apologize from the Councilman Mays and if you tried to catch me and couldn't. But I'm pretty accessible, I think. And so, um, it's no harm, no foul. I'll look at that stuff now. I'll look at it tomorrow. I'll look at it after the fact if this passes. But we've had so much conversation since I've been here about unspent block grant money. Mm -hmm. And you said to us when there was unspent block grant money, we would have some opportunity. And so now you bring in the unspent block grant money, and I don't see any opportunity. I don't even see the detailed discussion that has went on. And so that's why I refer to the special affairs. I just believe in my mind, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that there are some opportunity for some service areas, not just in my ward, but in other wards, if we were allowed to have input. And I'm I'm not prepared to vote for this at this time under the circumstances, let alone um, the attempt to communicate with me today um, that might have failed. It was actually last week. Last week or whatever. I like to communicate in committee meetings, and I like to know, is there any other unspent money that you are working on now in any other areas? Um. There, you asked specifically about ESG, and at this point, I'm not aware of any ESG unspent funds. We are, we just went through the exercise for CDBG. There is additional dollars that we are evaluating right now, but we also talked about a way to move forward in the future with um, CDBG so that the applications that we receive are actually funded, so we're not going through an extra exercise during the year. Um, so potentially, there is an opportunity for additional CDBG funds at this point, um, there's limited amounts of home funds that have not been programmed. Uh, I think it's a little over 160,000. This actually allocates all but that 169,000, I think. All but that 169,000. But we also have projects in the pipeline, which I shared before, our housing investment strategy uh, for those 
for those projects, and so there is a potential for um, for an additional project coming to you. I know you keep talking about the applications and the process, even with a citywide advisory council. What I've looked at over the years, they can make recommendations, but by the time they get to council, we can still change it and fund things up to a certain percentage. That would be a fair statement. Yes. So if we have the opportunity to change funding and and, and, and do fund it. I would like to be involved in those uh, applications and that leftover funding before it's applied for. I don't like to um, see things applied for and then knock them down. I'll do it if, I, if I'm able to, but I think, Suzanne, what I'm getting at is, is kind of not right, it ain't sitting right with me to, to say it's unspent money and we would have opportunity, but then the money is brought here with no opportunity. Clearly, I hear you saying 169000 in home dollars out of this pot of unspent money is left over. Did I understand you? That's not, it's not included in this resolution so and it's not programmed at this point. I would point. like to make a referral that we talk about that 169000 in the next committee meeting as it relates to what it might can be used. And if nobody else has any uses for it in their areas, I can spend it probably all in mind. So we'll see what's happening. But um, this Habitat for Humanity, $226,000 for support construction of two affordable units. Where is that? Um, actually, I have Emily Doerr um, with me tonight. Emily is our housing program manager, and she can speak to the specifics. Is that the one where the lady had came in? No. Those are, this is a different. Those are, the project that you're talking about is actually not one of our home projects. It was related to Habitat, Habitat for Humanities um, program, their, their, their regular program, not home funding. So is this something new? We'll wait to hear what it is, and I, I hate that it's planned because I don't know if I support it yet. So sell me on it if it's new. I just want to say one more thing before I turn it over to Emily, and that is um, some of these projects, as I started out, have received partial funding, and because of because of the additional needs, we've reviewed that, and some of them are additional funding. So. This is, I'm not saying that this particular one is, but there are projects that is are this in here. this particular one one? I, I don't believe so, actually. Okay. And I'm familiar with what you're saying, and I, you described it as money that was put in. One of them might have been 900000 and we were putting 200000 in to keep them in, maybe 900000 Just to clarify, it's $1.3 million. Whatever, I just want to, the number I stated was incorrect. Okay, but I remember good. Yeah. So, you know what I'm referring to. I do, to. very. So when I look at stuff like that, if it's 400000 to keep from paying back and we put another 200000 in, for example, um, sometimes I might pay it back because if we put that much in to keep from paying a certain amount back, I'll look at it. But all of these details is what I'm going to be looking at now as this money come forward because I don't think I'm getting the right communications about leftover money and the opportunity we had. Uh, Madam Chair, I would hear from her, but I, I still don't know if it's going to move me on this resolution. Will you just ask for some specifics on Sylvan Court? And Emily has the detail on all the projects, and so she can provide um, additional information on the specifics for Sylvan Court. Hi, good afternoon, Council. Good afternoon. Um, Sylvan Court specifically is a four unit new construction that Habitat has proposed. It was actually um, partially funded in the 1718 action plan. And we would like to add additional funding because instead of going, with, they were going to complete their funding with um, a source that would have limited who could live there. And instead, they now have a partnership with Traverse Place to fund homeless veterans. And so, would like to utilize home funds so then that way they could fulfill that partnership. Um, it would be four units townhouse style off of Sylvan Court, which is just west off of Church Street, um, south of Court. And it's just down the street from some of the uh, Traverse Place, or Grand Tra sorry, Genesee, 
yeah, Traverse Place and Reach um, uh, facilities, and so the proximity makes sense for their uh, ability to apply um, their existing support services and wraparound <coughs> services for these individuals. That is why the partnership was actually um, first proposed, and the units themselves are all going to be three bedroom units, so each of them would be able to have three um, uh, individuals living there, so we're looking at housing, being able to house 12 individuals who were formerly homeless, specifically homeless veterans. Um, so that is why Sylvan Court has been proposed. Again, uh, we intended only to fund half of it um, in the 17-18 action plan, um, and then let them use other, other funds to fund the other half, but um, as conversations have continued, um, being able to use home funds to fund the other half would actually allow for them to fulfill this partnership. When you said that it had been partially funded by who? By the, by the city for, with home funds. That, that you've approved, Council. The, um, when she talks about previous action plan years, these are actually action plan years that have been um, reviewed and approved through the city council. What so, year do you know? She said 1718. 1718. Mm -hmm. And so now this is leftover money. And this is leftover money from a variety of years, not just 1718. So, so when you brought it for approval and it was partially approved, you knew that was partial approval. And that was how much do we know? Uh, $226,074. And, and so this is another $226,074. That is, is that the total needed? That is correct. That will, that will completely build these four units to, to house these 12 individuals. Uh, with no additional money needed and no other strings attached. That's the key with this project. And when would is, they be complete? Uh, they would like to start construction as soon as they could get a contract, which is pending this uh, resolution's approval. And what would be the estimated time of completion? Uh, we told them we'd like to see it uh, groundbreak by next summer, so summer of 19. We are pushing on this one because of the um, conversations with Traverse Place and the need uh, during our consolidated planning exercise that we did last year, many different people referenced the need for um, making sure we were taking care of our veterans, and that was brought up to us multiple times. So this conversation, we want to prioritize in our being, um, um, I'm using all of my meanness to, to push them to really <laughs> uh, to fulfill this in the next year. Are you with Habitat for Humanity? No, Am I with? Oh, I, I work for our Susan. department. She's, oh, she's oh, I work for the city. Yeah. Program manager in our yes. department. Habitat for Humanity. If they're going to do a lot of different stuff, I'd like to get them, of course, to see what they're proposing and what they're trying to do around town. So I would make that referral to send to uh, to Habitat for Humanity because if we don't deal with housing and we got a private program. For one, I want to see what they're talking about. And then the, well, it might have something to do with you because you say you got a hundred and sixty-nine thousand dollars of leftover unspent. Dollars. That has not been programmed that yet. Has not been is that programmed. right, Emily? That is correct. And that did is I in ask that, that conversation to be on the next meeting? <laughs> yes, that you did. That was your first and referral. And you'll be prepared to tell us what that can be used. Sure. Um, the Genesee County Land Bank, 200000 for debt services. Um, there's been money put into the Barrett's Place project. Correct. How much? 1.35. That's the one we were talking about when yes. you corrected it from yes. 900000 to 1.35. Yes, and in your packet, um, which I know you don't have in front of you, but in your packet there's a letter you asked for copies of applications. Um, I did provide those, but there is, I'm sorry, it's not in that packet, it's in the packet that I emailed earlier today. Okay. So there is a letter from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development where we requested a waiver to um, provide additional funds for this project in order to ensure its affordability. HUD actually granted that waiver, and we're thankful that they did because <coughs> without that waiver, we would have had to pay back $1.35 million. How much more money do you estimate that we'll have to can you tell? This two hundred thousand should be it. This That's is really correct. just to fund a re to fund a reserve account, um, in order to continue its affordability. And so after this this cash is provided to the project, we will not provide we will not have to provide any more funds to it. That's this correct. community first incorporated project for five hundred and twenty seven thousand um, acquisition of Avon Park Apartments. 
seemed like they was before us, community first. Is this the same project or a different project? It's different. It's different. This is a different one. This. And what is the deal on that? Uh, I'll let Emily explain sure. this one. Um, this, uh, it's a 56 unit affordable housing development just outside of downtown. Six point of information. Yeah. I'll um, give you a you go ahead. Suzanne, um, the reason this is in my ward, mm -hmm. and it says that it's funding three units. Mm -hmm. So this is this is what the home funds are providing. Mm -hmm. So three units is we have to do a calculation of our investment into a project and how much it actually, um, how many units that that um, those home funds actually go for. So our home investment is for three units. Well, I, I, when we talk though. I asked you how many total units you you said you thought about 27. I was wrong, sure. and I, that's why I said I would provide and, you information And the only today. reason why, the, and, and no offense to you, Suzanne, I've knocked those units, and I told you that I've got multiple calls from those units. And so I'm just trying to find out how we deem a half of a million dollar investment to secure three out of 56. And so, yeah, would you, Emily? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with home funding, um, the three units is actually, that's us doing um, doing communities first, I will say, doing them less paperwork. We could actually attach the home funds to all 56. Mm -hmm. However, I would say we want communities first, given that they are looking at many different uh, developments around the city. We want to, on an annual basis, that number that we indicate is how many units that they have to complete um, income uh, verifications for as well as uh, they're called HQS inspections, housing quality standards inspections. Um, those are time consuming things. So by saying three units, that's us saying to them, do this for three of the units because um, we wanna make sure you're doing all, of, dotting all your I's, crossing all your T's, and three of them, that's still gonna take you, it's on average two to four hours for the inspection, it's on average two to four hours for the paperwork for the income. So every unit is a, is a full day for some staff person. So we thought by having three units, it makes sure that they are following the rules, but also doesn't um, require a staff person a full month of work. And so so we assigned it to three units, and that is how the home funds technically then are going to be assisting those three units. You can tie home funds to however many you want. It's just the question of, on an annual basis, how burdensome do you want to be to your developers, and do you want to say to them, because it's all required paperwork. The number there is what we have to submit from them into our system to HUD. And just, I get that. Just one way. So I just want to say to this: the maximum subsidy. Um, I so. get that, but but you're looking at the the possibility of saving them. What about the people, the other 52 or 53 units that because yeah. we've seen mm -hmm. where it it seems like you, you're you know, and I get that we don't want to burden, but I've seen developments that are only required to do this on this, and then the, the rest of the people, as long as you can go in and check these three, that, that like sets the stage for the rest. And, and I'm just saying, this is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I'd like to get into it more with you. I'm disappointed, as Councilman Mays has said, that this came before us like this, especially because that's a large project. And if I had only known, they actually thought someone else was involved. So to, to have such a large apartment complex in my ward that was going to be getting such resources and not to have a, a piece of it, especially because we're reallocating dollars again, um, to have, try and have this conversation now doesn't benefit me at all, right? And so I can do it later, but I'm just saying, this is two times, Suzanne, in the last six months that we've been told that when they're reallocated dollars, we would be involved that we would know in case there are projects in our ward that we haven't been involved in. And this is $1.4 million. The other one was only like 400,000 or whatever, but this is $1.4 million. And so I can't speak for my colleagues, but for me, this doesn't feel like being part of a team that is really trying to find out what the needs in your ward might be and what could possibly be done for you to assist your ward. But Emily, I'll get with you on a, 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 a well, different thing, so but three units doesn't seem like a lot for the investment. You absolutely can. Um, um, 
Mishta currently owns this because it went through tax foreclosure. Correct. And Mishta actually is willing to sell to Communities First based on their track record of rental housing for affordable housing units in the city of Flint. Um, this amount of money that we are investing in the acquisition is actually really key to Mishta selling to them. Mishta is not a very good, um, um, they, they might not be the best in terms of um, being able to manage properties in Flint, but um, um, they know that. Um, that's why they really want to sell to somebody that is actually invested in the city and is experienced with managing properties in the city. So that's where this money um, was a part of that conversation where Mishta was saying, city of Flint, we are wanting to sell this to a local entity who can manage these properties, who will keep all 56 affordable. And that's part of the actual documentation, which I don't have copies of, I can ask. I'm more than happy to ask that, that's, that'd be my pleasure. Um, and I'll review them and we can meet, and that would, I would love that. Um, what is Community so, First's investment? We're putting in 527, first, how much are they putting in? Uh, simply for acquisition, uh, acquisition itself is 1.2 million, and then they would actually have to invest additional funds because all 56 units need to be modernized. Um, as part of the agreement with Mishta. Um, so all 56 um, are livable. Um, we actually are going to do HQS inspections for these three. Um, however, um, Mishta itself has said that they want to see an investment to modernize all of them because it was constructed in, oh boy, a number of years ago, I'll just say. So they need to be modernized, especially with the foreclosure. Um, they did not have as diligent um, attention Management. paid to them. Exactly. And so as a result, Communities First um, will be able to use these funds to help with the acquisition and then leverage, I think, additional financing to actually um, um, modernize all 56 units as part of these conversations with Misha have kind of mandated. They, um, that, that's, that's all been part of the conversation. And like I said, I haven't seen the actual warranty deed restriction or warranty deed or any deed restrictions. Those documents, as soon as this council makes its decision about the funds, then at that point I'm more than happy to ask for those documents. We can't ask before that? Um, well, Mishta hasn't offered them. I've asked and Mishta has not given them to me. So I'm more than happy I'm, to I'm turn it back over to you. I know you yielded. I'm all done. Where is right there, off of, if you go straight down Court Street and how you either go towards my or you veer right off next to Stride, the one mm -hmm. yes, yeah. right, first that's set first set on, set on the right hand that's side. Right. Yep. Yep. That's where the property yep. referred yep. to. Yep. 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 And then community first down here for 100, another 195. That's cool, it's true. Yes. Right, that's a different project. Yeah. Okay, just wanted to I see people who want to talk. Thank you, Councilman Mays. I appreciate that. Because you know, I ain't trying to get started. I appreciate that, Councilman Mays. Thank you, sir. Miss Fields. I wanted to point out to some of my colleagues here that have uh, weren't hearing the term before that may not understand some of the distinctions of this home investment partnership. We have three entitlement grants that we get every year, ESG, Home Investment Partnership, and CDBG. The reason why it's important to know that they are different funds is they all have different rules on how you could use them. And home funds, uh, and it's been a while since I've done this, but I did it for 15, 20 years, home funds can be used for demolition only if you're gonna do new construction afterwards. So it's not like CDBG where you could just do demolition and not follow up with anything. Home funds can be used for new construction where CDBG cannot be used for new construction. They can both be used for rehab under certain conditions. So the, it's harder, okay, to find agencies that know how to administer and use home funds and we used to have quite a few community development corporations, like the one I used to run, in the city of Flint uh, until Mayor Don Williamson. And we had about, I think, six or eight CDCs close uh, during his tenure. So now it looks like, and I do think, uh, Emily, you can help me here, but I think the only ones we have operating that can actually know how to administer home funds are um, uh, Communities First, Habitat for Humanity. Uh, who else do we have that's still? Metro Housing Development? Mm -hmm. there's, um, there's even an additional threshold of a CHODO application, and we only have two CHODOs, which are known as a community housing development organizations, and 
if we don't have chodos, we can't spend these funds, actually. There's a certain percentage each year. Um, and you'll note that um, in the left column of the table that's in the, your packet, you'll note that these funds, 2012, 13, 14, 16, and 15, um, uh, um, the reason why all of this is crucial uh, to be spent is because um, these are, um, I'll say, annually we have to use 15% of our home funds on CHOTOs. We only have two CHOTOs currently. Again, those are community housing development organizations. And those CHOTOs that have submitted CHOTO applications for these projects, and those are 80-page applications showing financials and um, um, your, who your board is and your track record and who your um, internal and external uh, checks and balances for your financial processes are, those are communities first and Habitat for Humanity. So um, we work with them. We are working actively to try to develop new CHOTOs. That is a, a conversation that Suzanne is leading as our department director to um, develop new CHOTOs, but currently these funds, um, which do need to be spent or else we would lose them due to expiration, um, by investing them in these projects, not only do we have the funds be spent properly, they are spent by the entities that are allowed to spend them per the HUD rules. Okay, it's, thank thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right, so my point is there are other ideas that people may want to do development in the city on various properties, but uh, home rules are so different and so stringent that there are very few organizations that even have the capability of using these funds. So I think um, we're very lucky that a couple new ones came around and uh, we still have some that have a known history of good administration. So I personally will be supporting this because if we don't, we'll just lose it. But I do agree um, with Councilwoman Galloway that and Ms. Wilcox, you have promised to give us more advance notice, and I know we asked specifically for CDBG, but home as well. You know, council needs to be kept up to date on where unpro, you know, where there are extra dollars on program dollars. So Councilwoman uh, Winfrey Carter and I have spoken and working on a process where I can bring that information to you. I would be very interested, and we have talked internally, about a process for reprogram funds that meets both council needs and our needs to spend the money timely. So I'd be really interested in having that conversation with council so that we can have these discussions where it's not just one-on-one -on -one conversations with council, it's an understanding of what's, what's actually available, what we can spend it on. And we've talked internally about some processes that we'd like to institute that would hopefully preclude that in the future. We're really just trying to spend this money right now because we have a need to spend it. And again, as I said last week, every organization that has requested funding is actually being funded. So you may, you may be aware of other organizations that are interested in these funds, and I appreciate your comments about home because they are much different and more difficult to spend in CDBG. But we are not. We are actually funding organizations that have requested funding from us. So, yeah. so in, in the grants committee, I just want to point out, and then I'll be through here, a couple things. It's really important, okay, that we look at and we get to the citizen participation plan that we rewrite that. Because once again, mm -hmm. the current version was pretty much written by an EFM. And so we want to go back to a version that is more home rule. And the other thing is, and I urge you again, if part of our problem is we're always late in this cycle, and so it's like, boom, they have to give this to us because the date we're gonna lose it. Somehow we have to find a way to get ahead of the curve and ahead of the timing. And part of that, this year's money, I mean, we're already into the third week of April, okay? and. An advisory board hasn't even met to review the action plan allocations, the applications yet right. for this year. So, uh, you know, if you've not given your name, I mean, I think Ms. Wilcox is going to be forced to just put together a review board with or without whoever. Didn't you say you were going to support this motion? I think you kind of give a little way out there. Well, thank you, Mr. Mays. So, I, I'm almost finished. 
the so for the allocation because next year is going to have more home dollars, mm -hmm. okay, and CDBG and ESG, okay, and we've got to get ahead of that curve, and I think she's going to be forced to just appoint who she wants to appoint, rather than your your recommendations if you don't get those names in there. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Oh, Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I agree with Ms. Fields on this one. I tend to support this because I'm not very familiar with community first, but I'm very familiar with Habitat and the spirit of the work they do. But um, maybe next time around, we could be up on what's going on, but since the progress has already started, we don't want to keep postponing and delaying product. I mean projects, and especially if we lose the funding. And I support uh, Habitat, Ms. Margaret, and them wholeheartedly, because I do know her and I know what she do in the community where I come from. But uh, I think it could be a little different how, you know, at the last minute, like Councilman May stated, but uh, on this one, I think we need to keep keep the motion moving without any delay. I'm I just I just want to say for the record, mm -hmm. Councilman Davis, I think there might have been some um, misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. um, Councilman Mays, in my opinion, was re reminding us that he asked for the postponement for this to show up before us today like it did. Right. But the motion was made to move it forward without him. So he wasn't okay. saying postpone it now. Okay. He was saying the reason why it's here gotcha. is because we postponed. Gotcha. He postponed it. Gotcha. So gotcha. thank you, Ms. Worthy. Uh, yeah, I am in favor of this, especially with the explanation, and also I'm working on my person for that <laughs> <laughs> committee right now. It has been very hectic in council, as we all know, uh, and so I'm working on it so we can get that going. So just wanted to let you know that. Can I say one thing? Right? Yes. Yeah. I know this is a little bit, I'm sorry, Councilman Mays, may I address that point? <laughs> I'm the cap chairperson, you can't. Sorry, I know he yielded the floor. To yeah, someone. that's okay. Um, so Councilwoman Fields addressed that, and um, I am trying hard not to just put a group in place. So even if you don't have resolutions uh, for your people, if you just give me the names, we can start. We are, we are way behind on this process this year. So if you just send me the name right at this point, whether they've been resoluted by council action or not, we will schedule the meeting. And then I had a question from Councilwoman Winfrey Carter regarding how, the time commitment. Mm -hmm. For purposes of this review committee, it's about three days. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's three days meeting, but there's significant time involved in reviewing the applications. We ask everyone to review the applications, and we have several. Um, so, I mean, the time commitment, I, I would say three days meeting um, in person, but it is, um, it is substantial to review the applications and come prepared to discuss. Okay. Can I ask her a question? Uh, um, when you say three days meeting, is that like consecutive, like all together, or is it spread out? I'm just trying to figure, just so that, you know, my person that's interested knows, if I can give her the it, correct information. Typically, in a normal cycle, it's spread out a little bit more, okay. but we are looking to condense it because okay. we're so behind um, the time frame. So we'll be looking to schedule some some meetings, like intensive meetings, okay. within a few days. Okay. <clears throat> Ms. Winfrey Carter, did you have something? Um, I think she pretty much answered okay. answered my question. Um, I do want to say that Suzanne and I we're going to um, get together and make sure that we bring all um, um, grants committee proposals in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. um, it's been kind of hectic, but we'll get there. Thank you, Ms. Yeah, thanks, Madam Chair. This was um, postponed the special affairs um, from the Wednesday committee meeting. So you did right by bringing it to committee meeting. Some folks were not here. And that's what one of my pet peeves is, that you should discuss all these details in committee meetings. Right. Um, through you, Madam Chair and Mr. Davis, this was brought to special affairs, postponed to special affairs. I don't want people to read into what I was trying to do. People were saying they were tired. People were gone Wednesday. And so some of the folks here that's chiming in might not have been nowhere in sight when this was discussed. 
when I'm discussing a motion, I'm specific to that motion. That appointment of those people on the citywide to me is another conversation. And I'm checked about that when I kind of go over the latitude. That's why I just sit and listen sometimes because I'm not the only one going over the latitude. I don't mind people going over the latitude. I just don't like the, I can see what you do, but I can't see what I do type of thing. That's a problem with Councilman Mays and it causes chaos in these meetings. So if we don't go over the latitude on a motion and bring everything into it, then if it's good for one, it should be good from all for all from now on. I went back on my word. I said I wasn't going to yield no more. And I've already yielded at this point in the meeting and seeing things go all over everywhere. Um, the 195, $195,000 project for Coolidge School Apartments, where is that located? Um, Coolidge is on the Ballinger <laughs> Highway, just Six north. Six Ward. Six Ward, <laughs> correct. Where? Do you, Madam Chair, with Mr. Winfrey, you know, you know, you know, you know, the if you need them Walgreen on Ballinger and, and Beecher Road, headed towards Court Street. As you make that turn before you get to Court Street, it's to the left. You know, that school is there because there's some apartment buildings. Yeah. Yeah. But so is it four, it's four units, is that all? Oh, no, it's four units. Why do it say construction of four affordable units? What is, what is going on there? Okay, so similar, Emily can, Emily What is Emily's last name? Emily Door. 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 And she is a program manager in the Division of Community and Economic Development under Planning and Development. Okay, let's see if we can speak like this up. So this is the same issue as in terms of the home investment. Right. Um, there's a number of units. It says in the packet, which we do not have, there's uh, a total of 54 units, but um, um, the investment the investment is proposed for just a portion of those. So, again, you don't have to so bad. You <laughs> did that right by bringing it to committee meeting. I must emphasize that because that's what we asked you to do. Right. And you brought this to committee meeting. In order not to slow it down, I postponed it to special affairs, knowing that it could keep moving, but some more communications in the interim. So, so Emily can explain more of the specifics about the project. Well, just to say. I'm hearing from Mr. Winfrey. He seemed to be excited about it's it in exciting his ward. Project. She seemed to be excited about some in her ward. <laughs> and so that's going to affect Councilman Mays with the vote coming out of really my ward. Excellent. Uh, but still, I'm going to still say the same thing. Emily, it's okay with the details. These guys seem to be excited about it. <laughs> um, and that's how I want to do when stuff is sometime in my ward, but I don't care about voting alone. My position is this. I brought it here to emphasize that reprogramming money, and I think I've done that. And I don't care what no new council person move or vote and do because they didn't hear what I heard. And when you hear what I hear heard about reprogramming money and input, then you said in the committee meeting, you talked about demolition as it relates to new bills. Mm -hmm. We've heard that, and we've heard it again here. Mm -hmm. So we went over that, and I understand that. But I want to know all those rules. So come prepared to give me the rules in addition to that one that we've now heard twice. We heard it from you Wednesday, and we heard it again here from Ms. Fields. That's what I want to know. I want to be able to look at it. We even heard from you about how it have to go to a entity such as Habitat or whoever who does that type of thing. We heard that Wednesday. That's what I want to hear. And we'll play, we'll do an experiment, if you're willing, with the last hundred and sixty-nine dollars. Is would, that fair? I would prefer not to call it an experiment. I would call it one because it's an experiment for me to see if I can understand what you're saying. So you might not want to call it an experiment. Oh, okay, experiment, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. But I'm going to sure. call it an experiment, or I'm going to call it a gain in the knowledge to see if I can put these pieces together and recommend use of it. You should, you are a professional at it. Emily is a professional at it. So you call it whatever you want. But for me, 
I'm going to call it an experiment. Now, if you just want me to call it something else, then you tell me the proper word. But that's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it an experiment as we talk about this money to see if I can understand something that I might can suggest it be used for um, going forward. Okay. And so, not to play with words, but that's what I'm going to say right now. I want to see that on the next, um, what would it be? Grants, do you, you mind if this on your grants committee? And most time, by the time we get to grants committees, folks are gone. And we, we just ain't doing stuff a certain way. So I would ask that it be on the grants committee discussion. And if ain't nobody here but me and you, I'll be here, but then we'll it'll be over. Okay. Because of a lack of a we can definitely provide you information on that. Okay. Okay, thanks. I just want to say for the record, I have been very lenient with my colleagues. There is a five minute rule on resolutions, but I assume that since we only have one that we could, and so just know that if we have more than one, we will be abiding by those rules. Five minutes your first time go around, and five minutes your second time go around. But Ms. Fields, it is your turn. Mr. Gerard will have you after that. A couple things real quickly. Um, I'm aware of that rule, and thank you for mentioning it, because Mr. Mays thought I was going way around the uh, mulberry bush apparently but I think what I said did help some council people understand this and I noted that Mr. Mays the first time he was recognized talked for a half hour straight and then and you then, then the there was motion. a point of information is this a, is this on the yes motion? I'm going to finish and I spoke for five minutes <laughs> okay um, I would actually have a question I have a question for uh, Emily Suzanne. Could the code of regu code of federal regulations is called CFRs, and you can find all the program uses, including eligible activities, disallowed things, etc. What is the uh, uh, home investment? Discussion on a motion up or down. She didn't say what she was going. That is true, Miss Fields. Do you want do you want to do it at, at additional things or is that? Go ahead, Ms. Fields. I just wanted to help Mr. Mays. He wants to know no, the don't rules. Don't help me. Help yourself. Right. What, what are, what's the CFR for home? 92? 92. 92. And the last thing is, the last thing is, uh, Ms. Wheeler, is she here? Okay. Well, I just wanted to see where we are in bringing forth the uh, CWAC ordinance. That's all. Thank you. Is, um, Mr. Garrett. Hearing no, no, I would like a motion to adjourn. Thank you. No, 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 we have a motion. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, if there's no Madam Chair, <laughs> Madam Chair, I'm not going to keep putting up with this real quick. So, see, I'm ready to vote on it, but I tell you what, Miss Fields, no matter how she talks and what tone she uses, I purposely be like, purposely. That's just my stop. And if we want to come in here and have a certain meal, I'll tell you, but every time, Ms. Field, you say my name in that slick way, I'm going to say yours three, four times. I promise you that. And it ain't going to be nice. Thank you, Councilman Mays. I'm tired of it. Yes, sir. If there's no more discussion. All in favor of moving this resolution, the council say aye. Aye. Opposed have the same right. Madam Any abstentions? Um, it, it moves to council. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, Councilman Guerra. I was going to make a motion to adjourn. There's a motion to point adjourn. Point of order. Councilman Mays, what is your point of order? We've got an agenda that we ain't got through yet, and he's making a motion to adjourn. The agenda says after this resolution, you got resolutions, appointments, ordinances, additional council discussion, then adjourn. So I didn't hear a second, right. and I'm because calling you, a point of order before it's a second so we can finish this agenda. And, uh, and there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? No. no. I'm, well, uh, you tell me, well, President, no, what, because what, maybe I'm... Well, Councilman Mays, his, his, his point of order was let's go, let's, let's do the agenda. Right. Because there, what he's saying is there's a breach. Right. No I can just say for the record, I just want to say for the record, okay. as the chairperson of this committee, 
I went around the room to find out if there were additional okay. resolutions that went on, right. and this was the only thing. But if it makes my colleagues feel better to say each and every one of them, I am willing to do that. Are you willing to withdraw your motion? I'll withdraw. Thank you, Mr. Guerra. Any resolutions? Any appointments? Any ordinances? Addition council discussion. Yeah. Councilman Mays. That's the one that I was going to do. <laughs> 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 that kind of bothered you that it's a discussion. <laughs> discussion. Uh, council Foreman Galloway, we still on time. And I'll be done before the clock hit 4 30. But we're supposed to sell that we're supposed to start a council meeting at 5 30. Have you started one yet? But we were on our way. Oh, no, you were oh. not with what happened here on the road. Uh, so, please, so, Councilman Mays, what's your additional and discussion? And I'm going to still get out of here before 5 What's your additional discussion? My additional discussion? council discussion is this. It's an observation. And y'all can take it any way you want. Thank you, pardon. I said I thought I was doing a good job. You <laughs> did a good job. A motion to adjourn, and then order if it's after the second, it's order at any time. You can okay. Address. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. That's something some you and the president that was talking about. I, I stayed at it. But my point is this: we had a vote last week, and last week I heard it from the radio shows that I walked out on, and all across town. I've supported this administration for two years or more. And I'd be doggone if I choose to vote or articulate any position, will I go through what I done went through thus far? But I love politics. I'll go through it again. And Miss Fields, in my opinion, is playing on that. See, when I go right, she go left. I done seen her go at the administration left and right, but now all of a sudden I'm doing something. She all in. So if that keeps eight votes from now on, it might be a good strategy. We'll have our ple uh, Pledge of Allegiance by Ms. Worthy. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, the indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll have our prayer, prayer and blessings by the former community relations director for the city of Flint and for the head of the uh, charter, count, uh, charter group, Ms. Cleora McGee. Shall we bow? Our Lord and our Savior, we come in humble submission, thanking you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, asking you to bless each and every one that is represented here and their families. We ask you, Lord, to bless this meeting, let it be for the upbuilding of your people. We thank you and we praise you and let all information that is gathered here today, information that is put forth, concerns, let it all be for your people and let it all be for our city. Bless our city, bless all of our representatives that are over us, Father. We ask your blessings on all that are gathered. We thank you and we praise you. Amen. Reading of the, reading of the disorderly person, city code subsection. How you doing, Mr. Erickson? Any person persist in disrupting this meeting will be in violation of Flint City Code uh, section 31-10 disorderly conduct, assault and battery, and disorderly persons, and would be subject to arrest for a misdemeanor. Any person who prevents peaceful and orderly conduct of any meeting will be given one warning. If they persist in interrupting the meeting, that individual will be subject to arrest. Violators shall be removed from meetings. With that, are there any changes from my colleagues or additions to the agenda? Chairman. 
Councilman Mays. Um, minutes I'm starting to get concerned about. So um, I'm ready to move forward, but I, 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 I really want to see some minutes. Thank you, sir. Public hearings? We have no public hearings at this time. And then that brings us to public speaking. Madam Clerk, who's our first public speaker? Our first public speaker is Mr. Quincy Murphy. Mr. Murphy. Good evening. Quincy Murphy. Um, before I get started, I just want to um, thank W.T. Stevenson um, Construction. We've been having a situation on um, Marengo. I have one of my, um, one of my um, family member homes with the water being backed up, and they came to try to resolve the situation. It wasn't, but I just want to first thank them. Um, um, Benzik, um, and all, the mayor's office and Councilman Mays and Santino for trying to help us resolve that situation. We're still working on a difference. Um, two things. One, we are going to Lansing on uh, Wednesday back to the do some rallying. It's been four years since um, the water crisis. We still yet to get 12,000 service lines. They ended the water pods. We will be loading up right here at um, First Trinity around the corner at Beach Street at 9 o'clock in the morning to um, um, departure. We got five buses going. Get on the bus with us if y'all not doing anything. Uh, keep us in your prayers on the highways and byways while we go back down to Lansing to lobby to try to help the city of Flint. Um, what I'm here today to talk about is, um, you, you guys know we've been talking about the charter. We, um, we was approved in August, and you guys have been moving to um, implement the charter in some form or fashion. There are um, some things that we would like to see um, moving faster, but you guys are doing what y'all can according to what y'all feel y'all can do. One of the things that we've been um, asking and requesting is for the Ethics and Accountability Board to be in place. Some of you guys have names. We're looking at some dates. It's going to take a process. I saw the mayor um, bring forth a proposal for the 2018-2019 budget, which is good to allow for the um, a bondsman's office to be put in place. I think it's 250000 that she might have proposed the budget. I want to thank her and her administration, and hopefully you guys support that initiative. But we still got a process. When you get the Ethics and Accountability Board in place, there are still some things that need to happen. Ordinance of qualification, um, Councilman Mays talked about wanting to have some kind of qualifications for the Ethics and Accountability Board. Then the criteria and the qualifications for the bun. That's a process. So we asking that you guys do whatever y'all can, May coming around. Set a deadline, set some dates, bring a name. Give yourself May 14th, the first city council meeting, for all of y'all to come, because I know Council President Herb Winfrey brought and um, said that he would like to have all the names before y'all make approval. Some have names, some yet to get names. We asking y'all to challenge yourself to come with some dates and some deadlines to get this done. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, uh, Mr. Murphy. Madam Clerk. Next speaker is Mr. William Hammond. Mr. Hammond. Good evening. Good evening. I'm uh, Bill Hammond. I'm a resident of the Fifth Ward. I live in uh, Metawanee Hills. And I just kind of want to echo Quincy's comments a little bit. I want to thank the council for the efforts that they have been doing to get the charter fully implemented. Uh, this last uh, two weeks ago, we had our April meeting of the uh, EDC for the City of Flint, of which I am a member of, and it was nice to have uh, Maurice Davis, Councilman here, join us, and so it feels good to have that board fleshed out, so we're glad to see some development happening. Uh, in regards to um, the implementation of the Charter, one of the things that it talks considerably about is having good, qualified people in responsible positions. 
And I'm very pleased to see tonight that in the city administrator uh, requirements that you're proposing, that the municipal requirement is there. We feel it's very important for the future of this city to have professional people who know what they're doing leading us and guiding us. It's not been the case that we've had people like that in the last 25 or 30 years all of the time, so it's good to see it more or less become codified. Um, I agree that we do need to try and establish some deadlines. We have um, yet to see any kind of real directive from the council as to what your plans are for full implementation, but that's okay. We see that you're doing some things. But if you could establish like that deadline of that first council meeting in May to have your names in place so the public hearing can get scheduled, it's going to take three months, four months, maybe even six months for the Ethics and Accountability Board to get all the work done that they need to do in order to do their job effectively. So it would be really good if they got implemented sooner rather than later so they can start that work. Otherwise, they could be pushed off clear until next year before they can actually get started. And we really think that that is crucial for the city of Flint. Again, I want to thank you all for the work that you're doing. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. Madam Clerk. Jim Richardson is the next speaker. Good evening, Council. My name is Jim Richardson. I reside at 2020 East 2nd Street. Um, I want to talk this evening a little bit about rebuilding trust uh, within city government. Um, city Council has been doing a lot of work about getting the charter uh, implemented, doing a variety of things. I'm particularly pleased with the way in which you're proceeding with working on the budget in a timely way so that the community can have some input in, re in relationship to that. Because I think it's very important that council provide the leadership that we need to help rebuild trust within government. It's a problem that came out, as you all are aware of, that came out of as a result of the water crisis that many of us citizens have lost trust in the ability of government elected officials to provide the kind of leadership that we're after. I would also would like to suggest that one way to add to that, uh, building that trust, is to, as the two speakers in front of you have indicated, make the appointments to the Ethics and Accountability Committee. Because the residents of the city are looking for a place where an ombudsman in place to be able to respond to issues that they're concer concerned about and know that they can get a full hearing about what those issues are and a way in which to be able to get those addressed. So I'm urging you, as well as the other two speakers, to act on of the appointments of the members of the um, to the, uh, the Ethics and Accountability Committee and urge you to set a date certain in which you will bring names forward, hold the hearings that you need to do, and get the appointments made. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. Madam Clerk. Mrs. Cleora McGee is our next speaker. Mrs. McGee. Good evening. Good evening. Cleora McGee, 2821 Hillcrest Avenue, 9th Ward. I won't repeat everything that the first three speakers have said, but I do uh, want to let the council know that, um, you know, we served as the commission to make sure that uh, the charter was revived and um, revisited. And so uh, the residents in August approved it, almost two to one. And we're asking now that we're now into the fourth month of the year, almost a quarter, well, past a quarter of the year, and we're, we're concerned that we'll be into next year before any of the major changes will be put in place. So we're, I'm asking, along with the other uh, former commissioners, that you take the time out to set that date. Set that date so that you can get your nominations in so that the um, board can be established. And also so that you can start working on these other items. This, you know, there are other items that need to be accomplished 
especially before this year is out because we will be going into another year. And, and it's important for the budget as well that things start to happen. So we are asking that you establish the accountability board by setting a date of May 14th so that you can have your nominations in, so you can start the work of establishing the ground rules for all of the process that goes along with that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McGee. Uh, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Mr. John Cherry. Mr. Mr. Cherry. Mr. Cherry. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, Council. My name is John Cherry. I reside at 1025 Kensington Avenue. I'm also here to speak about the charter, and I want to thank you. I see that you have qualifications for uh, a number of positions that you're working on. I really appreciate that. That was a huge issue that we heard from residents uh, when we were revising the charter, so I really appreciate that. I also want to talk to you about the Ethics and Accountability Board, and I want you to take a moment. I know when uh, we have a lot of new council members uh, this term uh, due to the uh, election last November, and I'm sure you remember when you came into office, you were drinking from a fire hose because there was stuff that needed to be done and you didn't have much time to get your feet up on the ground, learn the job. And it's going to be the same for this, this Ethics and Accountability Board. It's going to take, particularly since it's an entirely new board, so they need to do a lot of the basic organizational work that is required in order to, having a, in order to have a functioning body. So it's going to take a good 90 days for this board to get that organization set. So it's really important for those members that they have the time to do that. So when July 1st rolls around and the budget that you pass in the next month or two uh, goes into force and there's money there for an ombudsman, the public's going to be really demanding that. We all know that. And so that board is going to need some time to set its rules, start asking what we need in terms of qualifications for an ombuds person. They need time to post that position so it's out there we, so that we get good qualified applicants that come to apply for that position so we get good, good, good candidates uh, in that position. And so just I, I just really would like to encourage you to uh, move with all due haste on those appointments to the Ethics and Accountability Board so that when those board members are serving, they are able to uh, have the time to really do a good job of organizing and, and getting a good ombudsman in place. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cherry. Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Ms. Heidi Fanoff. Ms. Fanoff. She stepped out. Okay. Next speaker is Mr. R. L. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell. Good evening, Council. I'm Mr. R. L. Mitchell. I used to resign at 3512 Mildred Street until the clerk took me out of my house and tore my house down and I'm getting now resign at 759 East Linden Avenue, where in my backyard I can see the graveyard of my auntie and my mama, which passed away on 2017. And my auntie was the one who told my mother to the name. She named me a name, but she didn't know how to spell it when I was born. But she said, abbreviated. That's how I got the name R.L. Mitchell. And people have been having a problem with my name, but so much for that. But to you, Mr. President, through the city attorney, question. Did you know that uh, the EFM was interfering with Council Lady 7 Ward, uh, Miss, what's your name? I forgot. Uh, Miss, okay. Gotcha. Because she's trying to get the community first with 57 units, and she just found out today that only four units was occupied by this businesswoman. She just got in the car and took off as she laid down a plan. From and um, Miss uh, the Seven Ward Council lady act like she don't know what's going on, but she ought to know there's a time limit on three days. Now you see why Flint can't get ahead because somebody like Miss Galloway always go along with the flow to get along. And we, and you should be like the Fifth Ward. She know how to deal with these people. She, she deal with the scrappy suit on. She deal with Christy, what a, the woman with the master plan. And she going on about her business. But you, Miss Galloway, you, I mean, but uh, you ain't, I'm talking to the, the 
couldn't allow to answer this answer the lawyer answer the answer me about the F the E F M. Are you aware that they're interfering with Ms. Galloway Ward? Mr. Mr. Mitchell, would you allow my answer? Huh? What? Would you allow me to answer for him? Yeah, come on. He didn't know. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm saying and saying that. Reason why uh if we had a conspection to inspect my house, it was by the Russell, and he's condemned my house, and we wanted the people to get the funds to tear a house down. We got to get the funds to really it, rebuild it. And that's what we got to get some people's in Flint to know how to, like the ambusman, like the mayor put the ambusman back in there. And like we, peoples of Flint, it's okie dokies go along with the flow like Miss Galloway, Miss, and all that stuff. Like she got the biggest ward in Flint and, and a seven ward and, and still letting the peoples get in. I keep coming back. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Mrs. Carolyn Shannon. Mrs. Mrs. Shannon. Shannon. Mrs. Carolyn Shannon. You can speak on anything you like. Now? Sure. Oh, thank you. Carolyn Shannon, Seventh Ward. It is an honor to be in your presence. Thank you. To the Honorable Council, the Honorable Mr. President Thank Winfrey, you. and the most amazing city clerk, Inez Brown. Thank you so very much for allowing me to speak today. I would like to let you know that we do not want anyone to saturate our neighborhoods with marijuana stores or growing facilities. It is dangerous for the senior citizens. When we want our children to get up early and go to school, we want our young adults to get up early to go to work. We should provide jobs here in the city of Flint for our people. And marijuana stores is just another crime. And I'm wondering, Mr. President, is this by design? Because we've had over 40 years of being poor, and I am very tired of being poor. And if you have some money to allocate to the citizen, I may I suggest that you give it to the senior citizens who have lost so much and lost the very quality of life that they should have. Give the money to the senior citizen. Nobody wants a credit. Do you want a credit for your check? No. Get some technology. What are you doing for the Kmart building? Get some technology over there. Get some insurance corporations in the city of Flint with those big, tall buildings. Travel around the country, and you can see what other cities are doing. Clean it up. Clean up the city. How can you, have you ever seen anyone go into a marijuana store dressed up in a double-breasted suit with wingtip shoes? I'm not talking about the new wingtips, the soft leather. I'm talking about the wingtips that never wear out. Get some jobs, some real jobs here. And may I suggest again, go to Mary Bauer, CEO of General Motors, and ask her to build the DeLorean here. All she has to do is forgive him, as I have forgiven the John DeLorean in my heart. He had some out-of-the-box ideas. He helped those that was not as smart as he was. Uh, he was a master manipulator of somebody else's money, but he did help other people. And I want jobs here, real jobs, manufacturing, technology. Flint is not the weakest link, so don't bring those marijuana stores here. We don't need them. Thank you, Ms. Shannon. Right. Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Mr. Phil Schultz. Mr. Schultz. Mr. Schultz.
I'm going to wait three seconds, two seconds, one second. Thank you for uh, letting me come and talk about the diaper bank. I did this last year, but obviously there's many new council people, so I thought I would do this again. We start out, out in diapers and we end up in diapers, so I think they're probably pretty important to us. Um, four years ago, five years ago, Angie Mr. had Schultz, a shot. will you move your microphone up, please, so we can, there you go. Better? Thank you, yes. Uh, Angie Hendershot and I, for five years ago, started the Flint Diaper Bank. There's 4,500 kids under the age of three living under the poverty level in Genesee County. One of the main costs to a young person with a baby is about $1,800 a year for diapers. No federal or state funding, bridge cards, anything like that. So it's, uh, we literally have people with babies in this city that are sitting in the same diaper for an entire day. We think that's a travesty. We just had delivered 425,000 diapers a week ago. We give away 1 to 1.2 million diapers per year, absolutely no cost, with no administrative cost. You give me eight cents, we put a diaper on the street. Second thing I want to say is this is basically a, this is a package that we give out through the Food Bank of Eastern Michigan. So as you see your, the people within your wards, if they have need for diapers, if they call the Food Bank of Eastern Michigan, they can direct them to the, um, to the agency that can pass these out free of charge. Well, what's interesting, and you can't see this, but there's a toothbrush, a baby toothbrush, in the last 16,000 of these that we've done. And when they get this, what people don't know is if you have a child under the age of one, you can get, in this city, a free checkup, a dental checkup for that child, free of charge. If you go to the Genesee County Dental Association online, they will give you dentists that will do that, and they will give you a free toothbrush, not only in this uh, package of diapers, but also when you visit there. The second thing I want to say is May 5th, excuse me, Friday, May 4th at Riverfront, I'm having my annual wrap-up party for my I'm Concerned About the Blueberries campaign. There'll be about 15 or 1,600 kids that have spent the last six or seven months doing random acts of kindness. This is where we give away uh, U of M, hurts me to say U of M, give away U of M scholarships. I wish Michigan State was here. Um, and various awards to uh, classes in school districts for the work that they've done. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew if you have any questions about the diaper bank. By the way, you're all invited to the uh, ceremony uh, May 4th. And if you have any questions or people need any more answers about the diaper bank, have them call me or the Food Bank of Eastern Michigan. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Schultz. Madam Clerk. Our next speaker. Our next speaker is Mr. Arthur Woodson. Mr. Mr. Woodson. Woodson. How you doing? Uh, let me start off by talking about the accountability board. That should have been the first thing that was implemented. And we say that they need criteria. I mean, what if we start putting criteria on the people that's up there right now running for office? I mean, if it's a resident in that area, it's, I mean, it's the, it's the face of Flint. And I feel that that should have been implemented with the last city council. Not just saying this city council, but the last city council. Because it would have, you know, I would have had somebody to report to right now because the reason why we're, we're, we're still not far along in the water crisis is because they're taking their time. I mean, you can call Rob Benzik up here right now and ask him, have they started on the new phase? Which they haven't. They can't start on a new phase until they complete all the lines from last year in order for that company to be able to get the contract this year. And that's upsetting because this was the emergency and we are not doing what we need to do. And when they bring a settlement to you, the city has to approve it. City council has to approve it, like y'all had to approve the city count, uh, concerned pastors and Melissa May's lawsuit, which happened to force us on 30-year Gleewa deal, which happened to force our water pods closed. And you all voted on agreeing with that. And the lawyers came in, I remember that, Kate Fields asked them a question, and they said it was only about the $100 million wind fund. And they wouldn't tell y'all all the rest of it up in there. Don't accept that. That's like giving them a blank check. That's giving them a blank check. And then when they settle, when they come to you, you can offer other things in that settlement. Offer this, that they cannot use the money that is appropriated for Flint to resolve settlements. 
because concerned pastors got nine million. They're trying to give Flint Board of Education 4.1 million out of money that's already appropriated. And Councilman Davis, I respect you, but again, I say, this is checks and balance right here. You do not have to go along with everything that the mayor sends down here because that concerned pastor settlement is what they sent down here to city council. Ms. Fields, you know I agree with you when it's right. Hey, I'm gonna let you know when it's wrong. Last week, when Councilman Mays disagreed, I found that it was out of line for you to apologize for him to count, uh, Ms., uh, the mayor and Councilman Newsom. I think that was to agitate. On this uh, ordinance, for city uh, administrator, I respect Mr. Branch, but I'm, I'm confused here. Minimum uh, requirements, five years of increasingly responsible experience as a city manager, and then you go down to C, it says five years experience supervising a professional staff at the department head level. So can you discount one and, and uh, bring them in on the other? Because it was added in there. I think that we should have highly qualified people who have ran a city for five years, not GM. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Woodson. <laughs> Madam Clerk, what's Our up? next speaker is Mr. Robert Johnson. Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson. I don't know where to begin person I'm complaining about is not here. So I'm going to complain anyway. <laughs> Here's my order. Well, it's not an order. It's a, uh, from Powers Chapman. Mr. Griggs sent me to shut my mouth, telling me to, to quit harassing him about not living in the sixth ward. And he doesn't live in the sixth ward, that he lives in the eighth ward. Well, I'm ignoring this because here's the state police report where Mr. Griggs admits that he lives in the sixth ward. In the interview done on, I had this all, interview with the suspect. On 10:10 of 17, approximately 10:30 a.m., um, Mr. Van Singel, the detective, and Detective Sergeant Van Muller responded to the home at Doherty Drive in City of Flint. There, I was greeted by Lewis Griggs, and who come to the door in his T-shirt and underwear. He invited us inside to talk. Greg stated that he moved to Doherty Drive, or Doherty Place, approximately 12 years after he married, after he married his wife, when spent, he spent considerable money um, and time improving the property landscaping. He referred to the home as his man cave. He stated that the home at South Drive is operated as a bed and breakfast and the business is doing well. He stated that he purchased the home on South Drive when he heard the Flint Powers Schools was going to be moving um, in the area. Greg stated that he had to spend significant amount of money to repair the plumbing and in the home, and after the repairs, the bed and breakfast business opened. The business name, Knob Hill Bed and Breakfast, um, opened approximately three years ago. Purchasing the property has been a good investment. I asked if he cooked breakfast at the bed and breakfast. He replied his wife does all the cooking and he stays home. No, he stays home in which is Doherty Drive, or Doherty Lane. He stays home. She occasionally drags me over, or him over, to help maintain the property, um, maintain the property, and he stated that she, well, she stated that he, 
occasionally drags him over to maintain the property, and he stated he frequently goes there to prune the um, rose bushes. When I questioned him about the affidavit, um, Mr. Griggs stated that he remembered filling out the city um, city hall or filling it out at the city hall office clerk, but he did, basically he screwed up on his on his um, uh, how old he was. So here in the police report, the state police report, Mr. Griggs admits that he lives in a sixth ward. He admits it. Yet he is the eighth ward city council person. And I am tired of fighting this. I think that you guys need to do something about this. When the man admits it to a police officer, and yet you guys tell me I have no room to say anything about it. He is not my city council person. Joyce McNeil ran against him, and she should be sitting in that seat over there. Now, I think you guys should be getting this done and taking Mr. Griggs out of that seat. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Mr. Chris Del Moroni. Mr. Del Moroni. Thank you. My name is Chris Delmer. I live in Flint, Michigan. I would like to applaud Flint City Council, all you members, for being here today, coming back from vacation, wherever you were, two weeks ago. One of the most important votes were coming before you, and most of you weren't here. Yep. Mr. Mays, come on back. We got a meeting going on. I'll do it right here. It's about you. You might want to listen today. Mr. That was a great you, political you move. Proceed? Yes, proceed, thank please. you. That was a great political move Mr. Mays made two weeks ago. He put in a motion for $2 million to restart up the water pads, pods, and when it came time for a vote, he walked out, and it meant there wasn't a quorum to vote. It's, it's you know, I, I think he did that because he didn't have the votes. Or B, he didn't want to put his people who usually fall to his side to vote against them. We're still in a water crisis, Flint, Michigan. My God. You know, I asked the uh, city charter commission when they were trying to formulate the rules and that for our new uh, charter, and I also asked council for an attendance policy. Do you ever not go to work and get paid? Do you never not show up and have someone else pick up your children? You were elected to this position, and it's a position of responsibility. And if you're not here to vote, you cannot represent the people. The person down the street here who's not here in this council cannot vote. You guys have voice and vote. All we get is a voice, and you're going to hear it tonight, and you're going to hear it over and over again. Do something with your rules committee. What are you doing with the rules committee? Call for a meeting and just start talking about rules. I hope you would include attendance. Our community, Flint, Michigan, is dying. I don't know if you realize that. Figuratively and literally. We're going to lose tonight at 11.59 p.m., our cable TV, channel 28, WCMU. It was the only channel that many of us here in Flint could get without paying for cable. And why we have Comcast still to this date is beyond me. Expensive, terrible service. So we'll be without TV in a community. We're, we're a community without a TV, without water, a newspaper that comes out four days a week. It's old news. It's dead news. We used to have a radio station in Flint, Michigan. It's gone. 
I think we have a charter that is unenforceable. As much work as they put into it, as many hours as I went to their meetings, I wasn't on the commission, but it, it appears we have a charter that's unenforceable. And council, you need to do something. You got to get off from sitting on your head and you need to do something, do anything, because nothing doesn't cut it in this community anymore. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Del Moroni. This is the April 23rd, Madam 2018. Clerk. Our next City speaker is Mr. City ben Horner. Mr. Ben Horner. Mr. Horner. Is he here? He's not in there. Okay. Next speaker is Mrs. Gladys Williamson. Ms. Williamson. Thank you, City Council. I'd like to welcome you all here. This is the first time I've been here since the new City Council has been put into place, voted into place. I'm here to speak about how the oh my God, he's how, how the yard hey how the yards were left in October they came and they tore up my yard replacing my pipe but here I was up at the Sleeping Bear Sand Dunes for the whole month of October had I been here had, and they waited till October to tear up my yard, I'd have took the water hose to them. And they not only tore up my yard for where the pipe goes, but no, they climbed up on my yard with their back hole. So my whole easement is tore up, and what's there? Clay. Clay. Now that was in October. Now we're six months past, and I spoke to this man back here in the blue shirt, back in the very back, that's supposed to be over this. Listen, I don't care about people that haven't gotten their pipes and, they, and him moving on to the next group of pipes. You haven't took care of the first group of pipes, and the people over by the golf course that live on the other side of Atherton Road that got their yards tore up last spring. Listen, they came with the most beautiful black dirt and spread it out and hydro seeded for them people. Now here I am on the other side of Atherton Road and it's been six months and my yard, and now it's settled, and this man tells me, well, we don't have no time, well, we're gonna get to it. No, you need to get to my yard before you move on to something, another section of pipes. You don't sit up and leave people, because I've paid my water bill, I've paid my taxes, I keep my yard very pristine, and for me to look at my yard the way that the city of Flint hired somebody to, I don't care that it, you hired somebody to come and fix these pipes. I want my yard fixed. I want my restoration to my yard because that's all that I have is my home, which is losing money every year sitting in Flint, Michigan. And so I would ask that before you move on to somebody else's yard, you clean up the mess that you made because I'm taking the garden hoe to it and I'm pulling all that clay out of my yard and I'm putting it out in the street. I don't really care what happens to it, but it's coming up out of my yard and I expect to be treated just as good as the people that are over by the golf course of Flint, Michigan. Thank you, Ms. Williamson. Our next speaker is Mr. Jeffrey Shelley. Mr. Mr. Je Shelley. Shelley. Hi, I'm Jeff Shelley. I live in Flint, Michigan. First of all, uh, I've heard numerous people talk tonight about the Ethics and uh, Accountability Committee, and I heard a date of May 14th. That'd be a great date if, you, if uh, we could get that done. And there's a reason why. There's people like uh, Bobby Johns came up here with an issue he had that should probably go to the Ethics and Accountability Board or uh, the Ombudsman. I wanted to read a, uh, this, uh, there's a court date down in Macomb County, uh, case number 17-007 or 2261 
dash CZ. In here, it uh, reads what the definition of residence is for it's Michigan law MCL 168.11, and then it, it's one. It says resident. As used in this act, a resident, resi <laughs> boy, resignation and voiding purpose means the place in which a person habitually sleeps, keeps his or her effects, or has a regular place of lodging. If the person has more than one residence, or if the person has residence separate from that of his or her sp spouse, that uh, place which the person resides the greater part of the time shall be his or her <laughs> official residence for the purpose of this act. This uh, section does not affect existing judicial interpretation of the term residence. Because I heard Ms. Uh, Inez Brown, I'll give this to her. I heard uh, her say uh, what she thought they were. And then, uh, I still got 56 seconds. Then uh, last week I talked about water, and I apologize to Mr. Mer uh, Winfrey because he don't have the cheapest water in town, sewage bill. I heard somebody last uh, council meeting said there was $4.44. So that's double yours. But anyway, uh, I did put in a new meter, and uh, we'll see what happens to my next bill. <laughs> so, and my taxes, uh, they wanted to, up, up on 93%, and uh, I had an uh, assessor come out from City of Flint, and they're going to reassess it because uh, y you know people can't afford uh, $12,000 year taxes. I'm just saying, you know, I know I can. I can't pay $1,000 a month for taxes. So, and I went to the tribunal, and uh, that's where we're headed with that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Seller, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is uh, Mrs. Betty Ramsdale. Mrs. Mrs. Ramsdale. Ramsdale. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'd like to talk to you about the fact that when we were here, the last time I was here, we talked. I, I was here with the Cultural Center Neighborhood Club, and one of the council people, we were talking about medical marijuana, uh, but one of the council people said, well, I don't know where that is. And I started thinking, there's no way all of you can know where everything is, but it's important for a community that all council members or anybody that works for the city have some sense of what's going on in all parts of the community. So I thought that maybe I would suggest to you that at the beginning of every council meeting, one council person, and you would take turns, take turns, teacher and me, you take turns, but that you would invite one of your neighborhood groups to come and to start the meeting talking about what they are doing in their neighborhood club. And one, it would give them an opportunity to talk to everyone, which I think would be wonderful. The other thing is it would help all of you have some kind of sense of what's going on in other communities. And they say one of the ways that you develop community is communication. And, and so I would hope that you would consider that. All of you have in your, in your wards some wonderful neighborhood groups. Some of them have been going on for years, and they work so hard, and they do so much that it would give them an opportunity to show their stuff, but it also would give the seventh ward person a chance to see what's going on in the first ward and so on. So I would hope you would give that some consideration. It's just a thought. The other thing I was, I've thought a lot about, of course, is the medical marijuana retired high school teacher. I have seen so many really fine kids, and 
most of my education experience has been here in Flint, born and raised in Flint, went to school in Flint, have been in Flint as a teacher and a counselor for almost 44 years. I have seen so many wonderful young people either get derailed or lost because of drugs. And we would say the same thing about alcohol. To me, suddenly we need 50 medical marijuana places, all of a sudden that many people need medical marijuana. The, what we are showing our young people, what we are getting them started in, what they can see, if they go up and they can stand someplace by a medical marijuana store and they see somebody lighting up a joint or doing something and it's all okay, we are not being helpful to them. So I hope that you would give that strong consideration that the young people really, we need to set examples. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ravensdale. <laughs> Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Mr. Harry Ryan. Mr. Ryan. Mr. Ryan. Hello, Council, President, City Attorney, Clerk's Office. How are you doing today? My name is Harry Ryan. I'm currently a planning commissioner. I've been on the, the Land Bank Board of Advisors before it was a Land Bank, when it was a 5013 C. I have a nonprofit feeding people in my community for the last 15 years. I cut over 60 yards. This is an incident of profiling. Saturday, two police c came to my house. I was sitting on the side came to the side of the car and said, what you doing? I said, nothing, sitting there inside of my house. He says, give me your ID. I said, for what? He said, give me your ID. You may be getting high or this could I said, no, sir. You must be mistaken. How long you been in this community? He said, seven years, and you don't know none of your leaders, and I'm the block club president? He said, who you calling? I said, I'm calling Mr. Mays right now. I'm saying this just to say, he left me, went around the corner, stopped some other people. This type of profiling for minority, which my neighborhood is the minority neighborhood, needs to be stopped. And this was state police. This type of conduct, everybody in our community is not bad. And for 27 years, I worked hard in this community. I will not tolerate that kind of treatment from nobody. If I have to file a lawsuit, I'm just coming asking counsel, you need to look in how they address people. I know we have bad people in the first ward, but you can't address everybody, not the doers, not the people that's trying, not the people that's working hard, that has a proven track record. Everyone in my community know who I am. I can leave a chair and bring it back. So this is profiling, and if they'll do me like that, what do you think you'll do to, they'll do to your young men? I didn't think we had a problem this bad, but this right here had me come down to this council and address this issue. This needs to be looked into. I know that the city, we don't have enough policemen and we have state people coming in, but we're paying them. So there should be some type of bedside matter or address that everybody's not a criminal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. <laughs> Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Mrs. Linda Poli. Linda Poli. Ms. Poli, when you get there, would you pronounce that so we can get it right, please, ma'am? It's proper pronunciation, sir. Okay. Linda Poli. All right, thank you. I'm a resident of the city of Flint, Ninth Ward. I live at 345 Buckingham Avenue. I came tonight to talk about the charter, but I think that message has been heard. What I'd like to comment on is what I'm hearing from the public comments. People are very concerned about process. People are very concerned about communication going both ways. People don't believe that they have any way to communicate with city government without coming down here and talking to you, and they're frustrated and they're upset. May I respectfully suggest that um, Bub's person might solve that problem. It did when I was here as a younger person. It was a good office, and it was a good place to go if you had a problem with the city of Flint. 
I know you're trying. Uh, I've had some discussions with my council person about some of the challenges that are presented to you as individuals on this council, and I know it's hard to balance priorities, but may I respectfully suggest that the rule of law should be a priority. Those emergency managers came in here and they did whatever they pleased. They didn't pay any attention to what the people wanted. They didn't pay any attention to the charter or the ordinances. They did what they wanted. That has caused a great deal of unhappiness. And my request would be that this city council look at the charter say, these are the rules, this is what we agreed to do, and this is what we're going to do, and then do it. And show the people of the city of Flint that you're not trying to be autocrats, you're not emergency managers, you're going to follow the rules. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bowler. <laughs> Madam Clerk. The next speaker is Mrs. Virginia Ward. Mrs. Ward. Ms. Ward. Hello, my name is Virginia Ward. Hello, Councilman. Um, my first time for ever being down here was last week. And basically, really, all I got to say is, hey, um, I'm not good as in everybody else doing, but this Economical Accountability Board for the City Charter School, May 14th, why don't you come in and help us out? Do what you got to do. You know, put your names where they're supposed to go. Do what's good for all of us. Then not only that, um, let's see where I go. I'm going to go here for the, the people that's on the, the city council. I don't know what it takes for you to get there, but um, a lot of people is qualified, you know. Maybe if people's just sitting on the board a little bit too long. I don't know who my councilman is, but I'm over in uh, the second ward. Who is the second ward? Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis, I, yeah, I have met you several times before. And um, it's a mess over in that neighborhood, too, over in that facility. Maybe if y'all take our time to respect one another and check out the different wards, maybe you would really see what's going on in the different wards, you know, instead of someone saying, hey, I live here. Uh, does it matter because you live here and you're not seeing what's going on with your ward? I, don't, I didn't reside here. I came from Mississippi, straight out the woods. Were you sitting up here crying about this water? We had to carry our water from the lake. That's the way we straight grew up. No lights, no water, but we live. We live real good, real good. And when we got here and you coming now, you're shutting off our waters because we don't have no money to pay the water bills. Well, hey, I'm going to bag my truck up down there to the lake and I'm going to get some water because I'm going to survive. It ain't like it ain't somewhere I ain't never been. Another thing. How the city come in, they tear up the yards, putting the pipes and stuff down. They half covering them roads. They leaving gravels and stuff all laid out, leaving sand and clay like the young lady saying in the yard. Another thing, the weed situation. Well, I grew up on weed. They called it rabbit tobacco when we was growing up. I've been doing weed all my life. But then when it come down to all of the plants and stuff, I disagree with all the liquor stores sitting on every corner. If you're going to put all the liquor co stores on the corner, put a weed store on every corner, too. I mean, just straight keep it real with yourself. I mean, and then another thing, whoever this man is that's having bed and breakfast, I want to know where your location at because I want to try it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Davis, I really would like to meet with you since you're over our second ward. Okay. I work hard in our community. And I like to keep, uh, you know, if y'all hollering about jobs for the young people, if you create some. All of y'all sitting here with a lot of uh, ability, you know stuff. I'm not a book-wise person, but I got common sense. And if you take your hands on hands-on training and teach these young folks, they wouldn't be out here killing each other. You give them somewhere to go so you can show them how, if the factory's open, you can go in here and get a job. You qualify for this job. Well, how many of y'all is really qualified to sit up on the board? I'm not, but I would try to run for it 
And who say I wouldn't get it? Because I got common sense. I appreciate you. Thank you, Ms. Ward. Next speaker is Mr. Richard Ramsdale. Mr. Ramsdale. Mr. Ramsdale. Good evening, Dick Ramsdell. I live at 1209 Kensington. Good evening. And I would just like to reiterate some of the arguments, or not reiterate, but just support some of the arguments that people have been making about really moving forward with the ethics and the accountability board. You've heard about trust. You've heard about the fact that maybe you would not have to listen to so many people come and bring their complaints to you if there were a board and an ombudsman. One thing I would suggest to you, and this may be far-fetched, but I think that you could make the argument, I think you could argue that the water crisis would never have happened, or certainly not the way that it did, if there had been an ombudsman in place at that time. Now, we know that the city manager eliminated that position, so that wasn't on anybody who was in, in council position at all. But if there had been an ombudsman, I think you can make the argument that the kinds of things that led to that crisis would not have gotten as far down the road as they did. So you folks have an enormously wonderful opportunity here. There is a new city charter. It is the Constitution for the city of Flint. And if you folks begin to move on that and establish a process for really getting, putting that charter in place, I think you will be remembered by the citizens of Flint as really being a very, very productive council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rowe. Our last speaker is Mrs. Uh, Ms. Heidi Fanoff. Ms. Fanoff. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak tonight. I understand my name was called earlier and I, I wasn't present, but thank you, uh, Madam Clerk and City Council. I know you've heard a lot today um, from folks who have shared with you the importance of getting the Ethics and Accountability Board seated and started. I know that it will help not only all the residents of the City of Flint, but it'll also help you have another um, place to go for places where there may be issues, concerns, or um, items that, that you need your help addressing. So the Ethics and Accountability Board, once they're in place, they'll be able to uh, bring, I think, bring together a lot of the pieces of the charter that, that I know you're working very hard to implement, but there seems to be some struggles and challenges in, in some ways. I do also want to thank you for having copies of the um, qualifications for some of the um, positions out there and read them over and just wanted to really also thank you for the work that you guys are doing to get us into a fully implemented charter. And please do um, help us get ready and get going for May 14th. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Heno. Uh, 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 colleagues, as you know, that after the speakers are done, we always allow two minutes for a response. Who would like to go first? Councilwoman Fields. Uh, Put the clock on, please, please, Miss. Uh. Okay. It's working. I've been waiting and waiting uh, because all of the speakers are talking about the ethics uh, board, and uh, this is what I wanted to say to you all: is I too think this is very important. I too think we should set a deadline, um, but 
there are some things that are not being acknowledged by this Charter Commission. Number one, that you didn't set qualifications for people to sit on this ethics board, for them to be appointed. And I'll tell you why this is so important and why this has to be done first. Because you can't appoint people and then go back after the fact and create qualifications. And I think we need to create an ordinance. And let me give you an example of some of these. We need to have an ordinance that says that there's a required uh, annual financial disclosure from people who sit on that board. We uh, need to say no one who has a current financial relationship to the city, i.e. they're doing business with the city, should sit on that board. Uh, no one who currently has a lawsuit against the city should sit on that board. And any of these conditions occur, then they need to get off the board. No criminal background. This is an ethics and accountability board, okay? No familial relationship to any elected official or appointees. And some level of education or experiential background should be a requirement. So it's for this reason, I know my time's up, that it's for this reason I've asked our president, I've asked our president to set up an ad hoc committee he said he would do that. I asked him again tonight. He said he would do that. I want to say that. And I think this ad hoc committee should be more than just council people. Although, as a council person, I very much would like to be part of that committee. So think about it. We need to have qualifications, and I agree with you, set a deadline, okay? But you can't just do it willy-nilly. It needs to be well thought out and done very carefully so that we get the right result. Oh, and one other thing, Mr. Ryan, please contact the state police and uh, place a complaint about this racial profiling. Thank you, Mr. Fields. Uh, Councilwoman Galloway, and then I have Councilwoman Worthing. Anybody else? Councilwoman Guerra. Um, I just wanted to um, thank the residents um, in my ward that spoke about um, the marijuana and for for I was I did miss some meetings and um, and that's not a lack of um, attention um, I had a legitimate reason for myself I still have a family and I still have a life but I'm very committed to this community um, but what I will say is the ideology um, that appears to be spoken of because there's a liquor store, you should have a dispensary. Um, I think many of us will agree that the liquor stores haven't been the best fit for communities. And anybody that has paid attention to communities, you will know that communities um, that have liquor stores are generally not your high-end um, neighborhoods. You will not find um, affluent neighborhoods bombarded with a lot of liquor stores. And so I, I just ask that we would be very careful. I'm disappointed that um, my colleagues agree to um, shorten the distance be from churches and elementary schools. Um, but on a council, you only need five um, for the, the vote to go through. Um, and so I, I, just, I just wanted to share those things. And um, I think that it's the community that needs to hold elected officials accountable. I do not agree that we should put educational requirements on our ethic and accountability board. There are many people that do not have higher education that are some of the most ethical people you've ever met. And so I will not support that type of, but I do agree that there should be some um, standards. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Worthing, and then Councilman Guerra. Uh, I want to appreciate everyone uh, to com coming out here and speaking with us. Um, for the ethics, I already have made my appointment, well, as far as I know who <laughs> I'd like to fill that position. Uh, I believe we should just go ahead and get started with the qualifications and then whoever ha is ready, start appointing them. Because if we wait for all nine of us to get somebody, it may never, ever happen. Uh, so I do agree with requirements. And Ms. Fields has said before, that doesn't have to be higher education, that good common sense or 
it work with ethics would be good. I'm not even sure about criminal activity because I myself have family that in their past had criminal activity and now they're the most ethical people. So we really have to give some thought about who we want on this board and it is very important to me. I, I don't want there to be any uh, question about who we appoint to this board. I want it to be a true ethics committee, and it does matter who we appoint. I don't want corruption on the ethics board. Um, Mr. Schultz, thank you so much for presenting. Uh, my son is uh, doing a uh, Flint diaper bank drive for his uh, class and so the winning class gets pizza and I was really excited to see that because it helps that cause and as a mother myself a single mother uh, diapers are expensive and and it's a great help and also for the blueberry award I've been getting uh, 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 messages to vote for cer certain students to receive that award. So Mr. Schultz has done some really amazing things in our community. Um, there was just so much covered, I can't get to it all. Um, but I will be in Lansing on Wednesday. And uh, let's see, anything else? Oh, and the state police. We, we don't have anything, like as Ms. Field said, to do with the state police. Uh, so please make that complaint. It does sound like you have a legitimate one. Thank you, Councilwoman, uh, Councilman Guerra, then Councilman Mays. Yeah, so speaking for myself, I do know that I, I fully support the new charter coming in, and I know that I've already announced my, it's, it's on, I already announced my appointment um, a few, I feel like a few months ago for the Ethics Accountability Board. I'm looking forward to that being established. As to the question, uh, what are the requirements sit on City Council, uh, that's 18 and live in the ward, and I pulled the 18 one pretty close already, so that's the requirements of that. Uh, and I just want to encourage everybody, the weather's getting nicer. Again, uh, get out there. If you see anything in the neighborhood, uh, pick it up. If it's too big for you to pick up personally, call into the blight department. Uh, this time of year, you have lots of kids riding around uh, on their bikes, being up and involved, people walking the streets. So kind of be a little bit more careful out there uh, in the communities as we get out there and the weather gets warmer. Uh, and if anybody ever has any questions, uh, specifically in the third ward, please reach out to me. And even if you don't feel like comfortable talking to your council person, reach out to me as well. And I hope everybody has a nice spring and summer, and I'm glad this winter is gone. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Mays? Yeah, I'd like to make a referral to the state police post to have somebody show up in governmental operations committee so that we can address that. We've had the top person come in before, so I'd like to make that referral and see if we can get somebody from the state police and governmental ops. So I'm glad that when you called me, I asked you to come and speak on it, and you did. So now I'll continue to do my part to see if we can minimize some of that activity. <laughs> Ms. Ragsdale, now you are a school board member, and I would like for somebody to start every school board meeting telling about every community. Now, I thought that was ironic. I, just a second, Ms. Just Ragsdale, second. Ms. Ragsdale, you, you kind of get like me. Hold on. We have to sit here and be quiet. I don't always do it. If the rules were mine, I would talk back and forth with you while you up here. I mean, I don't agree with these rules. First of all, I want everybody to know that when people come up and talk, I like to talk back and forth with them. And I don't think I can address every person who took the mic in two minutes. I call these cockamamie rules that I don't like and I don't like to go by. So I thought about that. I said, why don't they do that at the beginning of every school board meeting? You're saying they do. I'll keep looking and see. But this crowd complains about the length of meetings. If you look at the length of meetings, we're very lenient on public speaking. We don't turn nobody away. And then when we get through with public speaking, we had a group from the seventh ward come in. I mean, and they came in twice saying the same thing in two or three days. And we sit and deal with that. Then when we get to the business, folks is gone. That's why I take offense at Mr. Del Maroney on what he said about me leaving. Mr. Del Maroney, I wasn't fitting to have no vote vote and the public and, and the media are going to say, council turns down bottled water. I knew exactly what I was doing. So I take offense when you single me out, when week after week you see some of the other folks, and some of them don't look like me, they look like you, they be gone. But then I heard, well, I, I look at that. 
and I look at who come in here and communicate. I'm proud to be in the first war. I'm proud to get support from the people in the first war, just like Mr. Ryan and others. When, I, when they call, I listen. And I'll take attacks from folks all across the city, but I'm going to keep working in my ward and in my area. And I'm going to talk and act the way I do. A wise man told me the best thing you can do when you communicate, and I'm not referring to you, Mr. Del Maroney, I'm referring to the person who was re talking about the clay. First people wanted pipes dug up. This ain't a perfect world. It ain't like bewitch. You dig up the pipes and then you got beautiful lime. It's the city's right of way. Oh. Even though some people believe it's my grass, it's the city's grass. We had two contracts, one for pipes and one for restoration. I can assure you that I'm out to see if pipes can be changed and grass is going to be growing back. So I listen at everybody, but I take some stuff with a grain of salt. Finally, the Ethics Committee and the Ethics Board and Accountability Point of Information. Board. What's your point, Councilwoman? Um, President Winfrey, the buzzer went off a little while ago. And so my question is, are we extending the two minutes or are we staying within the guidelines? Well, the buzzer went off on a couple of others and I allowed them just a bit. So Councilman, Councilwoman, no, we're not. But he said finally, so I'm looking for him to wrap up if that's okay. I'll be wrapping it up, Mr. President. Thank you. The buzzer go off on folks speaking and we do that type of courtesy. I'm used to the politics. I was wrapping up with the ethics and accountability. I appreciate your indulgence. Um, one of the first things that should have been acted in the charter was the local compensation board. It was 30 days after the enactment of the charter, which took a place January. And I find it suspicious. I find it suspicious that the most of the members of the Charter Revision Commission is overlooking that time frame. That should have been done within 30 days, but I'm not hearing nothing about hop on it and get the local compensation board appointed. Mr. Ragsdale, the emergency manager wasn't allowing for an ombudsman at a certain time. And I see you nodding, and you realize that. So now we got all emergency manager orders repealed. We moving forward. I do believe we should have some job description and qualifications or something for Councilman. the ethics and accountability Please. board. I wish y'all had to put it in there, but we can do it by ordinance. So we're moving. And since I want to keep friction down on these cockamamie rules, I won't talk any further. Thank you. But if you stick around, I'll figure out a way to finish addressing the Ethics and Accountability Board, as well as the Ombudsman's Office. Thank you, Councilman. That's what it means to me. Councilman Mr. Davis. President? Oh. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to speak to Mr. Ryan for a second, which I've been on a mighty long time. I know that is one outstanding citizen right there. Matter of fact, Mr. Ryan was with the Charter Commission too, wasn't you, Mr. Ryan? You do a lot of things in the community. I know how it feels when people misconstrue your, how they do you the police. I've been profiled so many times. And also the Charter Commission, so good to see all of them out, Mr. Bankett. I like to say this about the Charter. That is a community effort and it took a lot of work to put it together and I can see the need now for the Charter. I would like to suggest if anyone see anybody within that second ward, especially charter commissioners, that see that's going to be fair and, and worthy of that seat of ethics, please let Councilman Davis know. Because I have tried to screen a couple people, but it's easy to pick somebody, but are they going to be fair? Are they going to take it serious like I'm taking this seat serious? I'm not trying to get somebody to ping pong back and forth. We need to move the city, get this car in gear so we can get things done. But if any charter commission see anybody within that second ward that really worthy of that seat, please let me know immediately so we get this thing wrapped up. And also, the constituents from the second ward, I'd like to say, fire has been, and also with that charter, the preamble need to be taken care of immediately where all citizens is treated fairly. That side of town, the second world where I'm from, 
they still dumping, they's blighted. The police department just did a cleanup and they dumping again. And it's not the residents within the second ward, by the way. People come in there and dump, which is not fair. We got some issues with the land bank. I'd like to do a referral one day to get them here and see why that money for the demos for how does it fund houses still sitting there. And I think they reallocated the funds. This was last year when I was a historic <laughs> district commissioner. It's a lot of work need to be done. Let's see, I'm trying to do it in, within my two minutes. But it's a lot of work to be done, but it's time now to move this thing forward. Mr. Quincy, y'all absolutely right. But if you see somebody worthy in that second ward, refer them. I'm done. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Winfrey Carter. Um, good evening. First, I would like to thank you all for coming out. I would like to thank the public speakers for um, bringing forth your um, concerns, your issues, and I would also like to speak on the Ethics Committee. I do um, want you guys to know that I do have a candidate. I nominated someone and I will um, send in the name, but I also think that we need to come up with some requirements um, as far as um, those that we nominate to the um, Ethics and Accountability um, Board. Um, thank you. Okay, and then just um, my comments is uh, regard. The the comment that I wanted to make is uh, there's a I want to uh, clarify that we change the yardage or the feet for churches and parks, not uh, schools and churches, but it was churches and parks, just so you'll know that. Point of information. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I was going to apologize for That's that. That's right. but no apologies. Okay. But just recognizing that we do realize that parks house kids, too. So that's where yeah. m one of my, my constituents. So I just wanted to put that on and, and just ask gotcha. for some guidelines, too, for some of the conversation when you're really trying to address a, a person, too. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk. Yes, if I could, please. Uh, as it relates to the standard of conduct uh, board, the old standard of conduct board, which is now the Ethics Committee and the Local Offices Compensation Commission, uh, I think it's important for the audience to know that our office, the city clerk's office, has been working very closely with the law department in terms of research together the historical part, which started back in 1974 under the old charter, as well as looking at similar uh, kinds of boards uh, throughout the state, as well as throughout our country. So we're working on it, and we're trying to move on it as expeditiously as possible. We're looking at the job description for the board members, as well as uh, the uh, description for the board itself, a more detailed description. I should also indicate that as it relates to the ombudsman, because there was an ombudsman under the old charter, we're taking that job description, looking at it, along with a new job description, because there are very few ombudsman offices here in this country. But we're looking at how we can expand that job description to include the things that you all mentioned in the, uh, in the charter itself. But please give us time to complete our research. We're almost there. But I want to thank the law department for their continued efforts and in, in trying to assist us in that regard. And Mr. Okay. President, Councilman. it's some budgetary and legal things that go along with them boards. That's what we're trying to say. Once you got to get the budget for that, they got subpoena power y'all gave them. They, it's legal and budgetary issues that goes along with implementing these things. And so we'll be looking at all of that. Thank and, you, Councilman. And, and regardless of how many times Charter Commission members come, we being polite to you, but we doing we 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 are implementing. And when y'all when I came to y'all meeting, I said some things that might have fell on deaf ears. But at the same time, we're hearing what you're saying. But this thing have to be implemented right. And when you put people in positions, you have to give them legal budgetary. Y'all even had budgetary issues. So I think we know what we're Thank trying you, to do. Thank you, Councilwoman Worthing. I think you wanted to make a referral. 
I, I did, thank you. Uh, I would like to make a referral for uh, what's going on with the cleanup from last year in the pipes. I believe that's for Mr. Binzik, uh, but I've been getting a lot of calls, and I'm sure so, uh, many of you have as well, about yards being torn up. Some of them are really big holes that are a danger. So uh, I really want to know about cleanup and when that's going to get done, uh, and, and not hopefully after the whole project's over. It's got to get done this summer, so. Thank you, you ma'am. Madam Clerk, are there petitions and unofficial communications? No, Mr. President. Official communications from the mayor or other city officials? Not at this time. Additional communications from any, any other place, I guess? No. Okay. And what is the board's pleasure for 180121? Mr. President. Councilman Mays. 180121 is a mayoral appointee for the Human Resource and Labor Relations Director, Makia McKinney Jackson. Mm -hmm. I would move that for approval. Okay, it's been moved for approval. 180121 has been moved for approval. Is there a second? Mr. President. Councilman Davis. I second. It's been moved and properly second. Is there any discussion? I do have some. Councilwoman Galloway. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank Ms. Jackson for um, the things that she is doing. Um, I have had some concerns. Those concerns haven't changed. Um, but I am going to um, support uh, Mrs. Jackson's appointment in, in my hopes that um, my hope that is that people will feel comfortable coming to um, talk with you to um, resolve any concerns that they have. And um, I haven't been able to speak with you. I know that you have made that available to me. Um, and, and I'm just hoping that, um, that, that because I, I see that you're very passionate about it, I'm just hoping um, that that appointment you will um, try and work through. I'm sure you know some of the people that are having a, a tough time, or, per se. And so I'm trusting that as I um, support this appointment, that you will um, do your best to make sure that those that serve under your leadership are comfortable. Thank you. Councilwoman Fields. Thank you, Councilwoman Galloway. OK. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know, I did quite a bit of vetting um, of Ms. Jackson for this position because I heard a lot of complaints from employees within the space of a month. There were a lot of really unhappy people at City Hall, including the unions, and that's pretty unusual to get that kind of response in such a short amount of time. So I did a few things. One, we interviewed Ms. Jackson and I asked her questions, and then I filed some Freedom of Information uh, requests with both her last two employers before coming to the city and the city itself, okay? Now, regarding the questions I asked her, she stated that the road commission thought she was a, a wonderful employee. In fact, they had given her uh, a superb evaluation and a raise increase because she was such a great employee. And I said, well, something has to happen between you're a great employee and then you've been let go from the position. What happened? And I really didn't get a clear answer. But in the FOIA response from the Road Commission, they said that there were no written evaluations performed. I had asked them for a copy of the evaluation she claims to have received. She had no written evaluations. Therefore, Ms. Jackson's records do not reflect that. Then I asked about the merit-based raise. They said Ms. Jackson was given a six-month step increase in October 16, which was standard time schedule and not merit-based. So uh, those two responses were very different from what she told me. I had also asked her um, if she had a law degree, and uh, she said no. And I subsequently found out uh, she didn't, but she had, on her last job, had sent in an application and a resume that was different than the resume she gave us. And on that resume, she claimed to have two years of at uh, the Cooley Law School. And I really don't understand why you would not admit to having more education 
than is on your resume. I find that very peculiar. Um, and then also at the time she was here, I had been hearing that documents were being shredded. And I'm very concerned about administrations who come in or, or people who come in and they just start shredding documents without at least an inventory because we really don't have a formal records retention policy, which is something we're working on and which is a referral I'm making to the law department to come up with a written records retention and more than just the state requirement. Um, but I asked her, did you keep an inventory of the documents you shredded? And she said, yes, she did. I said, could you send that to me? And she said, I'll have it to you tomorrow. Well, I'm still sitting here without that document. Um, and then in the FOIA I filed with the city, when I asked for that inventory of what was shredded, what I received was an invoice for the bill for the dumpster that the shredded materials were put into. So I, I think I was pretty clear on what I was looking for. You know, if we're shredding things, we at least have to keep a record of what we're shredding. You know, there, and there are many, many reasons. Even if it's very old documents, I mean, there may be documents that are important of, you know, historical significance. So I wasn't happy with that. And I will tell you that you may all be aware that, you know, when you ask for a reference from someone on a past job, various companies, they're very careful about what they say legally because they don't want to get sued. But I talk to co-workers, I, I talk to department heads, I talk to all kinds of people, and I will tell you that the responses about Ms. McKinney were not very favorable, not favorable at all. So for that reason, I am not going to be able to support that appointment. Thank you. Any other council persons? <coughs> Any other discussion? <coughs> Mr. President. Uh, Councilman Davis. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to state this in Ms. McKinney's behalf, and I'm the same way in, I, in my business situations. I know a lot of people, once again, call me a rubber stamp. But if they ever knew my personality, you know that's the farthest thing from being my reach. But for me to have a team, I know who fit well with my team. Now, this is a mayoral appointment. The mayor and her administration so far to me, Maurice, she have a strong team of personnel around her, from Mr. Newsom to Mr. Branch, Mr. Gilchrist, whatever makes it function. It's bringing down a lot of money in this community. She know what she need to function in this community. If the mayor's appointment don't work, that would be in the administration behalf not my behalf to choose her personality. Because you can have some with a talent, but they're not a fit. I done had good musicians with me that could play, but they ain't a good fit for me. I know what's a good fit for me. I'm sure the mayor know a good fit when she had one. No matter what McK Miss McKinney, which I haven't did that fine, uh, let's say magnifying glass type of re interrogation type deal. No, no uh, disrespect, but to me, that's for the administration to do, not for me to do. As a body, if it come to me, and I'm just saying, me, y'all do what you want to do. But to get this city moving, we got to quit sitting on our hands and being so uh, hard set against administration when they do something I don't understand. Mr. Newsom, I heard the same thing when this appointment came. The young man is just short of not being short of, he's brilliant. He's a brilliant young man, Harvard grad. Same thing with the economic department. I heard the same thing again. Now, I can't go race. I can't go race, but I could go race. Most of them happen to be this color. This color very seldom get an opportunity to prove themselves. But once again, I'm gonna just bag up out of this quickly. She deserved the chance the mayor wanna give her and let the mayor, and like Mr. May said time and time again, we could be referrals and remove you out of office if some be that way. But I'm sure the mayor would do it before we would. I'm done. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Mr. President, I made the motion to approve her when I got a call from a union person which was negative toward this appointment, I continued to talk with that union person. 
and that union person and I have talked and I don't think that negative push is there like it was at the beginning. I got another call from another union person who said, go forward with this. I'm going to pay attention because that union person supported me when other union folks wasn't, even my own UAW. I've had communications from two department heads who are saying, go forward with this because we've getting, getting stuff done that wasn't being done under the previous um, human resource labor relation head. And we have a void there. Ms. McKinney has been filling that void and something has been getting done. And so I didn't hear Ms. McKinney say it was a written evaluation. She didn't say that, Ms. Fields. She said it was an evaluation. It could have been verbal or written. So I didn't hear that you could find a written evaluation. She did say she had got a pay increase, and you confirmed that, whether it was merit or whether it was incremental, it had happened. And then as far as all of my education, when I apply, I got certificates and educations and went to U of M for a period of time and didn't get a degree, but you only hear me talk about Michigan State. I don't even want people to know I went to <laughs> U of M in a master's program, but that's my choice. I don't have to put down everything. I put Michigan State a bachelor's degree political science pre-law. I beg your pardon, Mr. Wynn. He picking at me. I know, I know him. I know him like a book. Mr. Richardson, he picking at me. I know him like a book. Mr. Ragsdale, he picking at me. See how they do, and now I'm off in a tangent. But I'm going I'm to a, I'm a support that. And these reasons that I heard Ms. Fields put on the record, I couldn't let them be put on the record without addressing them as best as I could. I do believe we have a duty and a responsibility to scrutinize appointees. I don't believe we should just say yes, yes, yes. We have the right to scrutinize appointees. I'm the type of person, uh, Ms. McGee, that believes in some cases I would do like the Senate and people down in Washington, and I swear them in and put them under oath. And I will ask some questions under oath as the charter previously and as I believe this one also allows. So appointments for me would be a little more of an exercise than what I'm seeing this council and any other council in the past 23 years do. I'll be supporting you, Ms. Kenny, but I'll caution all appointees of this. The minute that there's a problem I have no problem calling people up and scrutinizing them because at some point I don't have to wait for the administration. Um, in the old charter, as I learned the new charter, we could have a public hearing and then with enough votes we can remove. I hope that you be here longer than me. That might not be such a big task because they won't be always gone anyway. But I hope you be here longer than me. I hope after this appointment, if it goes favorable your way, that you continue to do a good job. I actually came down in the department, met with you, met with the employees in the department, asked them directly what they thought, and gave everybody a chance to say what they wanted to say to me in that particular department. And that's how I'll continue to do as I pick my way of meeting and scrutinize appointees. We'll see if this council ever get to the point of asking questions on oath. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Councilman. Uh, Councilman Guerra, would you please, add in your comments, if I can get you just briefly to kind of uplift you of them, please. <laughs> Go right ahead. Yeah, just uh, just uplift U of M. You know, uh, I'm Wolverine. You know, and I know they just uh, they just posted a really great article on one of their Michigan's best leaders, and uh, I think you should get a chance to check that out. Mr. You know, Rag, but uh, 
But in general, though, uh, Miss Jackson, she did. Uh, I know I had. She had reached out to me about going to her office, and I had some questions and concerns that I had got from uh, people in support and people not in support and phone calls. And I was uh, really happy once I got to sit down with her and actually talk about some of the concerns. Uh, I got a chance to see how the HR department was ran, and I've been hearing that they're they're running things real strict down there. But sometimes that's the good way to run it, so we can actually get stuff done. And uh, not a lot of people typically like change when change comes in, but change isn't necessarily always a bad thing. And uh, I'm looking forward to the department, you know, being beneficial and helping out all of the, re you know, the residents in the city with they have to go there and all the workers that we have. Uh, and I know that you have a good response time that I've heard from a lot of employees that you've been responding a lot faster than before. So I want you to keep up the good work, uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Thank you, Mr. Guerra. Guerra. Uh, Councilwoman Winfrey Carter. Um, I also want to say I had, a, had an opportunity to meet with Ms. Jackson, and I do want to say that I was very impressed. Um, we said and we talked for a very long time. I, I think Ms. Jackson is a, a very hard worker, and she wants the best for the Human Resources de Department, and um, I am going to support this appointment because, you know, there comes a time where we need change. And, and we need someone that's, that's dedicated and want to come in and get things moving. And that's what I see in Ms. Jackson. So I'm going to support this appointment. Thank you. Any other council discussion? Yeah, Mr. President. Councilman? Have the job description and qualifications been approved for first think, and think, second yeah. reading? I think we did that, didn't Mr. we? Mr. Guerra says yes. I think I asked I think that question the other day. Yeah, I think that would happen. So all of those things are in place? Yes. Okay. And so if all of those things are in place, how many days have you been, Ms. McKinney, how many days have you been acting as the interim? Um, about 30 days, so we within that 90 within day 90 time days. frame and the ordinances has been passed. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing them. Councilwoman Worthy. I just wanted to put my two cents in. I haven't really heard um, as much in the ninth ward, um, and I do thank you for giving me the opportunity to meet with you, even though I have been very busy the last few weeks uh, and wasn't able to uh, take you up on that offer. Um, but I just wanted to uh, just say that I really, this is a hard decision based on the positives and the negatives. And whenever you hear something negative, it is, it is hard to make that decision because um, you don't want problems moving forward. But I do appreciate the opportunity to meet with you. And if appointed, I would still like to do that. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Mr. Mays. Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Fields? No. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Ms. Worthing? I have a question. Can I abstain if I, I'd, li I'd like to abstain just because I don't know enough on my end, yes or no? You have to state a reason, yes. though. Yeah. Well, I don't know enough. And I don't want to say a hard yes or no without having as much input in my word as some of you haven't had in yours. Thank you. Um, Madam Clerk. Point, point of information. What's your point? Actually, it's point of order. An abstention is only correct when there's an actual conflict. You do have to state, but you have to have a, a reason of conflict to abstain. Thank you. I, Mr. President. Councilman Mays. I don't think it says a reason of conflict. It just says state a reason. So, you know, I don't think she's going to go to jail she, if she stated a reason. Thank you. Madam Clerk. The vote is um, six yes, one no, and one abstention. Passes. Thank you. Now that brings us to the master resolution. What is this body's pleasure? Ms. Pratt. Councilman Mays. Was Ms. Galloway from the say no. Councilwoman. Oh, Mr. President, I would move the master resolution for approval, which would be 180188. Something to do with 
trailer mounted diesel trash pumps 180189, self contained breathing apparatus 180190, McNaughton McKay Electric Company 180191. Jack DeHenny Company CCTV Machine Inspection System and 180192 Applegate Chevrolet 180193 Xerox Corporation and 180194 City of Flint Consumers Energy Company um, and then you also got Resolution referred from Special Affairs 180195 has to do with home dollars. And if I'm not missing something, if the clerk don't correct me, I would move those as the master resolution. Councilman Guerra. I second. It's been moved and properly second. Is there any discussion? Yeah. Here. Go ahead. Go ahead, Council. Go ahead, Council. Mr. President, the Consumers Energy Company, electric service, city-owned property. Exactly what is that? Which, which resolution is that, Councilman Mayor? That would be 180194. I'm trying to get a feeling of that before I decide if I want to separate it. I see Here come uh, Mr. Branch the and interim city administrator coming forward. Excuse me, that is for an easement on the property so that consumers can do some work down there. So it's no money, um, this is not a money resolution, this is just access to that's, a portion of the property. That's correct. Okay. And uh, Mr. President, the Correct. one with the home dollars, is Ms. Wilcox still here? She is. Ms. Wilcox. Based upon my colleagues, I think one of my colleagues had a project in this package um, in the seventh ward. The other one was in the sixth ward. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna try to sound hard line. If you read through me, you'll know I'm kind of soft, but I'm gonna try to sound hard line. Those are the two reasons I'm gonna vote and move this forward. I appreciate that, Councilman. <laughs> Yeah, the reason I wouldn't move it forward has to do with the discussion of these leftover dollars. <clears throat> Will I do it again? I don't know. Do I like to hear myself talk about it? Probably. That $169,000 is going to tell me something. Can I look forward to discussing that in committee? I have your referral noted for the next committee meeting, and we will address it then. Proactively correct. to it being allocated. That's correct. All right. So um, good job, and um, I'll be voting for that in the master resolution without a separation. And so I see no other separations, Mr. President. Oh, I see none. I had none at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Madam Clerk. <coughs> Mr. Davis? Yes. No, there are no separations, no. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. The vote is yes, zero, no on the master resolution. Uh, liquor license. Madam Clerk. None. Uh, introduction and first reading of ordinances. Mr. Chair. Mr. President. Uh, Councilwoman Fields, then, then you, Councilwoman May. Councilwoman Fields. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to do this. I just spoke to the attorney about it. But I would like to separate out some, uh, some of these, just like we do in a master resolution for okay. discussion before they're read. Would you like me to read the numbers? Well, I think. Point of order. Uh, Councilman, what's your point? If it's not 180127.1, that's the first one. I would just probably take them well, in that's, order. That's exactly what I was going to say is we're going to take them one by one. Okay. All right. 
So what is the what is what is my what, what's my colleague's uh, pleasure on one eight zero one two seven point one? Mr. Chair, Councilwoman Fields, I would like to move this back to committee for a thorough discussion on the I call it dumbing down of the job description and qualifications for the city administrator. I I've listened to people. Point of order. Sure, you want to you want to move it? That's your that's your motion is to move it. That's back. my motion to move it to right move right. it back to committee. Okay, your point, Government Councilman May. My point was it's just a motion, and when we'll see if okay. it happens. Or so it's been moved. Uh, 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 the motion was made to move it back to uh, committee meeting one eight zero one two seven point one. Is there a second? Legislative. Legislative. Oh, legislative. Legislative. Okay. Okay. So, is there a second for that motion? Is there a second? Wow. It dies for a lack of support. Okay. What is the council's pleasure with one eight zero one two seven point one? Mr. President. Councilman. I would Mays. move. I would move one eight zero one two seven point one for first reading. Okay, it's been moved that uh, for first reading one eight zero one two seven point one. Is there a second, I Councilman second. Guerra? I second. It's been moved and properly second. Is there any discussion? Yes, sir. Councilwoman Fields. I just like to state again, it's a bad precedence to create a job description and then <clears throat> try to appoint somebody who doesn't meet those qualifications. So now you lessen those qualifications to make sure that person can get that job. And in fact, I have a question, I, point of information. I believe uh, Mr. Branch was actually appointed prior to the ordinance being passed, which means that council voted to confirm an appointment that didn't even match this dumbed down ordinance they now wanna pass. Doesn't make much sense to me. I have a question. Councilman Mays, then Councilwoman Galloway. Yeah, I don't like the all of the terminology, but I would say to the Charter Commission members here, this is an appointment where Mr. Branch has been acting as interim city administrator, and we're probably at the 90 days or longer, and, and so we're putting the job description and qualification ordinances in place and under the charter that y'all keep talking about if it's not done within 90 days then council action is mute because he automatically becomes the city administrator and that's where we're at with this and so this is only first reading if i was to count the eric mays way he would already be in the 90th day part of um, the city administrator, January, February, March. And um, through you, Mr. President, to Mr. Branch, was you acting as city administrator in January? Yes. And see, when he started acting as city administrator or interim city administrator under the old ordinance, I think Mr. Jones might have left, Sylvester Jones might have left in October or somewhere in there. He immediately started acting as interim city administrator. Then when the new charter took effect, in my count and view, January 1st, he was still acting as interim or whatever. And so we know his language in the back of the charter, of this new charter, Mr. Richardson, that say people can continue to act. But then we also got language that we looked at as kind of contradictory, Ms. McGee, as it related to the 90 days and, you know. So we looking at those issues and believe me, we know that the charter is being implemented, but now as we implement it, we gotta look at legal applications. So that's my position. Mr. Branch, I would say it publicly, I count pretty good, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way up to 90. And regardless of what we do here, I could be wrong. See, that's how you talk publicly. You always say, I could be wrong. But by my count, 
He's already the city administrator because of the 90 days. I'm going to be supporting this job description and resolution to get stuff in place, not so much for that person, but for the position as a whole. These are job descriptions and qualifications we must do. And I would say through you, Mr. President, to Ms. Fields, we can still change them and amend them as we go forward. But I'll be voting to put this in place. And even if we do it after the fact, Mr. Branch, I think that I'll be voting in favor of that appointment. But we'll see how that go. But I think you might be there. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Councilman Mays. Councilwoman Vice President uh, Galloway. Thank you. Um, I just want to state for the record, um, since so many of the commission is here, I disagree with um, the um, perception of my colleague, Councilman Mays. Um, and, and, and I would like to know, I would like to know what we need to do to get outside legal opinion about the implementation of the new charter and the fact that there is, there is two different, very different readings. One states that if a person is an interim, they can only serve as an interim for 90 days. After 90 days, they cannot be reappointed as an interim. The other states that if the council doesn't act in a timely fashion, the person would automatically become a permanent appointment. So there's two different things, because for the first 90 days, if you started it in January, that interim clock, in my assessment, I'm not a lawyer, but in my assessment, that interim clock started, which meant that March 30th or so, 90 days of the interim was done. We received a job description, if I'm not mistaken, sometime in March. Now, there is a, a difference of opinion, in my opinion. Um, in the spirit of unity, because we've been hearing, you know, work with the administration, this council needs to work with the administration. And so everybody, in my assessment, was kind of understanding the new charter. So to hear from my colleagues that the administration could bring a resolution or um, an ordinance with the job qualifications in early March knowing that we would have to have something done by the end of March, in my, op in my opinion, um, doesn't seem like a very team-oriented thing. It seems like it would be, um, for lack of a better word, it, it seems like it would be an, a um, manipulation of the time frame. And so I don't agree with that. I don't know what we need to do to get an outside legal opinion. We've been talking to Ms. Wheeler about this now for, since February. And so I would like to know what council can do to get an outside legal opinion. I respect Ms. Wheeler, but it's clear that the, the interpretation of multiple of us up here have a, different, a difference of opinion. And so I would like to, I don't know if I need to make a motion, if I need to make another referral, because this is not the first time that I've asked for a referral. We had an extensive conversation in our committee room in, in March, if nothing else. And so I am not going to be at one of the nine that is going to act like the 90 days is not, you know, ticking. I don't believe it. I believe that the interim ended on the 30th of March. And so therefore, in my assessment, Mr. Um, Branch should not be an interim because he can't be another interim again. And so I am not going to lose my right as a council person and act as though interim and regular appointment were the same thing because the charter revision team in the charter identified those two terms in two different sections of the charter, which says to me they're not the same thing. And so I just want to say that, Ms. Madam Clerk or Mr. Reed, through you, Madam uh, Mr. President, what do we need to do as the council to get another legal opinion? about this scenario, because now we're like almost 60 days in from when we first started having this discussion. Understood, Councilwoman. And if uh, 
Councilwoman Galloway, if, if what you stated earlier, if the substance of this request has already been given in a referral, then what I can do is check. No, I don't know that it's been given a referral. That's what I'm trying to ask. Understood. Then I think a referral would be the best course of action. We can put it to writing exactly what this body can do and the procedures for that. And I will make sure to stress with the chief legal officer the importance of the timeliness of this. And maybe through you, Mr. Chair, to Madam Clerk, what is council's normal move? I mean, how do we get um, legal advice? And, and respectfully, I don't want this. I don't, if, if I did put a referral in, because I, I was very adamant that we needed one. And so if we are at April the 23rd, and we've been talking about this since the first or the second week of March, that's 45 days roughly that's been lost. I don't, I, I don't want that, Mr. so I don't so, know what we do. So you made, you, 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 were, you were expressing something to, to I her. I just want to know what we, we, we would have to still okay. go through the uh, law department to get their permission to get an outside attorney. So That's why does council have to get the permission of the law department? We are a legislative body. Why do we have to get an approval from the attorney who has a different ideology on the interpretation of the charter. Be because in the end, they have to pay for it out of their budget normally. Now, you know, and again, you and I can privately talk about the historical background about this later, but that's the way it's been done now for the last, I guess, 10 years or so. So okay. can I say to the charter revision, I mean, the, the, the commissioners, ex-commissioners, um, maybe, and Mr. Blanker, maybe you have some lawyers that are as adamant about moving this forward as we are that will consider doing some pro bono work for us so that we can get this charter moving. Po so point that we can order. What's your point, Councilman May? I don't know if that's really appropriate to be solicited mm -hmm. in that publicly. Okay. Then, then if it's not, I'm still putting it on the record. If somebody wants to bless this community by giving them some free legal opinion and they are fit for that legal duty, I would say, just like we accept in bottled water, I will welcome it. I can't speak for myself, but I'm done. Thank you. Mr. President. Hold on just a second. Uh, Ms. Erickson, do you want to indicate to us what you're going to do as, as in a response to Councilwoman Galloway? Sure, happy to. So uh, I think the, a clear takeaway here is if a referral is not already on the record, Councilwoman Galloway certainly would like to make one now, and I can make sure that that's addressed in a, in a very timely fashion, particularly given the circumstances here. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me tell you how we've, we've just finished with Councilwoman Galloway. We've got Councilman Davis. We've got Councilwoman Worthing then Councilman Mays, then Councilwoman Fields, in that order, Councilman Davis. No, he got Thank you. <clears throat> point Thank of information. You. What's your point? Is Ms. Galloway aware that in the past when Council has wanted to get outside information, someone simply made a motion and five votes would carry to make a request to the attorney to seek outside that's all it took was a motion and a vote. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Davies. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Once again, <laughs> I don't want to sound like a broke record, but sometime a broke record might be what we need to sound like. Um, this is 2018, y'all. Them old back in the day ways do not work. Let me explain myself. Nowadays, you have to function off talent more than anything. Anybody can get a piece of paper and flunk your, you got good doctors, you got bad doctors. Everything with a title don't mean you got that kind of talent. I'm one of them. I'm pretty good at whatever I do. Thank God I am. Now I say that to say this, we have to get to the place where we understand this is a different body and this body here really need to move forward. That's why we're behind on our charter and everything else. We set in our old ways of doing things instead of the new way. We got to come up to 2018 standards where if a body function within the realm of the administration, I'm not scared to see it. I'm not scared. I don't know about nothing but to love them. Know that. The administration here, and we work together, we can move the city twice as fast. I say that to say this, Mr. Steve Branch, 
is already functioning as such position, whether interim or whatever the title is. We need to get to the place where the administration, being the mayor and the rest of her organization, is satisfied with what Mr. Branch is doing. So therefore, we, with my understanding, we amend these resolutions. We do a lot of amending. So it would be right to amend for the future of whoever coming in to lessen all of that old school stuff and so it'd be room for talent. A lot of things nowadays, it's a lot of young folks that ain't gonna get position. Schools is closing, but they have a passion. They can shoot with the best of them, but they won't qualify, why? Because they ain't got a degree at somebody's school because of what? Money. Yeah. College is not free. <laughs> College is not free. In this environment, we got to start applying and making room for talent. And I'm not saying it as a rubber stamp, but I'm saying it because of where I'm sitting. It wouldn't, it's opportunity tied into your talent. Mr. Branch and the administration know, if I was hiring anyone sitting out there, I know because of your qualification I won't. And I don't need to see that piece of paper. Most people with the paper can't do nothing. And I'm done. Ms. Worthy. I have a quick comment. I don't think it was dumbed down. I think the only change we made to that was five years instead of seven years. And I know Flint has a problem uh, re recruiting and maintaining uh, people that are qualified. And it is a big problem. Um, and I really do think uh, Huey <laughs> knew some for uh, coming here and really he's he did it because he wanted to make a difference and uh, if we had those qualities in every position Flint would be doing better but I don't think this was dumbed down at all so I feel very comfortable uh, just voting for this it, uh, the five years experience and just that the municipal level uh, I think is pretty substantial Mr. Mays. Yeah, um, Ms. Galloway, the charter talks about the somebody proposing job description and qualifications. It talks about proposing job description and qualifications, but the act of adopting is us. We are the legislative body. In some cases, when you look at that charter, it's only one category of appointees that has a request or a mandate for job description and or qualifications. I don't think that nobody can play a game on this council by appointing somebody interim in January and then waiting to 30 days left because we got to be smart enough too in order to say, hey, we need to adopt job descriptions and qualifications for these spelled out offices of the charter. It's a particular name that they call those five, six or whatever in the charter. Mr. Richardson, Ms. McGee, Heidi, it's a particular category. All appointees didn't require that job description and qualification. But you can see how it's problematic as we try to do all of what we do. Budgets, they try to say that I make council meetings long. Maybe I do, but they should be long because work is piling up. And in this case, what Ms. Galloway is referring to is when the proposed job description came with the qualifications. Now we at first reading. I've moved it for first reading regardless of whatever it say, and I do know what it say. I'm not being callous there. But it's time to move that job description because we outside of that, in my opinion, the 90 days from the implementation of the charter. But Ms. Galloway says the other language say they can't be reappointed as interim. I don't think nobody is trying to reappoint him, Ms. Galloway. And I'm not a lawyer. I think he's been serving as interim. And it's, after 90 days, 
I don't think they're trying to reappoint him. I think they're going to hang their hat on that he becomes automatic. And so that's my spin on it, because the process, whether it was 30 days left to do first reading, second reading, and adoption, it came. And if we had a wanted to come in January, that would have been on us. Nobody could have stopped us from um, adopting job descriptions and or qualifications. I don't think the charter could have stopped us because they talked about a proposed ordinance, but that's just me. So that's why it's important to really be moving on this charter. This is a perfect example of why it's important, but in reality, it ain't just the Ethics and Accountability Board charter members, it's even these appointments and the local compensation board and others. It's a big task to implement a charter, and that's what I want to circle back on. Even the Ethics and Accountability Board, with what you got them doing, keep in mind how, what type of legal advice and budget, even for subpoenas and whatever, that they might need. So this ain't nothing you can just holler, I want it done. You can holler, I want it done, but guess what Councilman May is gonna say? I want it done right. And when you're working with various departments and you're still running a city, um, as it relates to other ordinances and deadlines, and some could say that the medical marijuana deadline was not a true deadline because we don't like medical marijuana but in fact it was a deadline and some of this stuff unless this council decides to meet monday tuesday wednesday and thursday and friday it's gonna pile up so let's keep an eye on us i'm willing to dig in and go long um but keep this in mind start watching the clock and then you see if I'm really the only one stretching these meetings out. I'm about substance when I talk and I talk with substance and nobody is going to make me feel bad for taking care of business and talking in a council meeting. That's my spin on it, Ms. Galloway. I don't think that you, you can win the argument that he was appointed for 90 days and then come back and win an argument that he is reappointed. I don't think nobody gonna use the word reappointed. They gonna use the word 90 days, he becomes automatic. Thank you, Councilman. That's what I would do. Councilwoman Fields. Okay, I wanna say this to my colleagues, especially Ms. Worthing, because I don't think she understands the key point of this. It wasn't just dumbed down in terms of seven years of responsible, responsible experience to five. Think of it as if you were going to be a principal and somewhere they required that you have teaching experience to be a principal. So you're thinking of it as the requirement was seven years versus five years. What does two years mean? That's not the case. What this is doing is the original said experience as a city manager or administrator. And what they changed it to is increasingly responsible experience or something similar. It's like they've made it into the requirement to be a nurse now instead of a superintendent having teaching background. That's how this has been dumbed down. You know, it's not the number of years that they've done. It's the background one should have in order to be a city administrator. And I think the charter was pretty darn clear that they wanted someone with actual city management, city administrator experience. And since this is the position that all department heads report to and work with just under the mayor, I think it's an extraordinarily important position and this person should have that kind of background specifically municipal government background 
Thank you. And just before I get Councilman Mays back in here, I want to say uh, to all of my colleagues that I appreciate your, your, uh, your dialogue and your discussion on this, but I'm glad that we didn't use that first uh, 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 job description because it was written by the emergency manager and that uh, city management uh, uh, requirement was because he wanted to change the form of government that we had from a strong mayor system to a city manager form of government. So I'm glad that we did change it. I don't see it, with all due respect to my colleague, I don't see it as dumbing down. I see it as changing. Why would we need a, a person who has had experience as a city manager? Yeah, I know that's municipal government, but that was walking right down the alley of an emergency manager and that Public Act 436 stuff. That is something that just gave me headaches for a long time. So now we have a chance to move this job description. And as Councilman May said earlier, we can change it. We can come back and change it. Amen. And we're not talking about, an, we're talking about moving a job description. Now, again, we can go on and on and on on this tonight. Hope that we don't. But again, I'm glad that we didn't use that first, I believe it was, August the 15th of 2014 uh, job description because it was designed and created by emergency manager uh, Darnell Early for what he wanted to do and that was to change the form of government. That's right. And use a city management form of government. And I don't think that he had that, uh, he should have had that opportunity to do that, but he was certainly pushing. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Mr. President, I would just say this real quick. What the discussion is, is five years of increasingly responsible experience as a city manager or municipal administrator, and the change was or equivalent, mm -hmm. and it went from seven to five. If you put this out there the way it was, and President Obama himself walked up into City Hall to apply for city administrator, and if he hadn't had been a city manager or a municipal administrator for seven years, President Obama wouldn't qualify. There you go. You've got to put that or equivalent in there, and I'm not going to let nobody make me portray me with negative, dumbed-down words. The city administrator position, I'm not going to call it dumbed down in the charter. Now, I'm going to show you something, Ms. McGee, chairperson of the Charter Revision Commission. The qualifications for city administrator under the old charter was they had to be the same as what the mayor was. And the qualification section under the old charter said that the mayor was a registered voter inside the city of Flint. In this charter, the city administrator, I seen a thing that if the city administrator don't act as the temporary or interim mayor, then it switches to other folks. And I thought that was interesting. Um, it's still in the new charter, ain't it? Y'all took that out? I think y'all left it in there. You took out the movement of so the only person who can act as the interim mayor, Mr. President, indulge me, through you to one of the charter commissioners. Ain't it another chain in there if the city administrator does not act as the interim or te temporary mayor? Citizen Beg your pardon? Appointment by, of a citizen. It's an appointment by who? Point of order. What's your point? Council Our Mom. council rules prohibit conversation no, between the audience and council. No, it don't. I said through the yes, chair. It no, it don't. Proceed. Council. Proceed. <laughs> Ms. McGee, oh. is it in there? Do any of y'all recall? Because I read it, and if it ain't taken out, it's a... I'll show you where it is. If the city administrator don't take us an appointment and a procedure process to get somebody else. Right, it can be from anybody. And so I don't think that was dumb and down. Yeah, it can be anybody. So I don't call that dumb and down. I thought that was very creative and innovative and I'm not a advocate of the new charter changes, but that one 
I like, and I'm, I, I, I refer to that as something good, not changing or dumbing down. So I done said enough. If President Obama were walking here under this job description, we done fixed it with an equivalent, and I think we could give it to him. I don't think we're going to see him walk in, but I would be glad. So I'm ready to vote on this um, job description, and we can tweak it later. But if that's the big issue, I hope I've explained to the public what's being discussed here. Or equivalent is fine. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Fields? No. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. The vote is seven yes, one no. Okay. What is the council's pleasure on? Uh, Mr. Mr. President? What? Councilman Guerra. Uh, I'd like to say something before we, well, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, 180151.3. Okay, there's a motion to approve 180 for first reading, 180151.3. Is there a second? Mr. President, I second. It's been moved and properly second. Is there any discussion? Mr. Yes. Mr. President. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman Guerra. Yeah, I just wanted to say before we get to all of this, I just want to say we've discussed a lot of these ordinance and policy changes a lot. Um, and uh, one thing is I don't want to sit here again and repeat everything over and over and over that we have already discussed. And I think that the, the citizens, most of them have been here for most of those meetings and have heard online. Uh, I know I, I will just personally say before we get to these, and I'm going to speak once, I know that uh, we had, there were some changes that I did not fully support. There were some changes that I did support. Um, but I am going to support the ordinance itself going through. And I look forward to all of these passing tonight. And that's all I have to say about all of them going through regarding medical marijuana. I hope that we can keep this conversation conversation short and not drag it on. Councilwoman Fields. Okay. I agree, and I'm not going to go over all these specifically, but I do want to tell you that, um, because I have to leave, um, most of these amendments I did not agree with because I felt there was undue influence from lobbyists, uh, where they tried to shape these ordinances so they would benefit specifically their clients people who are paying them to try to influence the legislation. And I don't believe most, the majority of these were to the citizens' benefit. They were to the business's benefit. And uh, so I, I really, I don't even want to approve this, but I, I do know we need to approve a medical marijuana ordinance uh, by a certain date. I just don't like the way it was done. And, um, And there were very few, I think what the staff had presented as a basic ordinance regarding zoning, et cetera, distances away from church parks, churches, parks, and playgrounds, uh, the minimum square footage for uh, a building that could be used for a particular, you know, either growing, provisioning, or uh, processing. I really have to applaud between legal and our zoning staff. They did an excellent job. It was when council started to tink tinker with this and call up all these lobbyists who wanted specific results for their clients. That's not how you do an ordinance in zoning. You do an ordinance for the big picture. And then if you have you know one, two, three businesses that they can't get their business, then they ask for a variance and they pay a special fee for a variance. That's the whole point of a variance in zoning. So I really and publicly want to say I absolutely do not like um, what the lobbyists did in this. I felt that they were giving um, unusual and unfair advantage to speak to council, to speak in our committee meetings where the public was not given the same advantage and they should have been given no more consideration than the public in public speaking, but that's not what occurred here. So, uh, oh, I thought you were winding down. Go ahead. I, I am winding down. Uh, so basically, I you know all the ways that they made this more accessible to have more marijuana facilities made no sense whatsoever. I don't think there's that need here in Flint, and um, 
I think is a, a, a really bad idea, and I think you're inviting speculators to come in and use every dang property they can find for marijuana, and I think it's going to take away from uh, industrial areas where perhaps we could have better paying jobs and something like another Lear Corporation or other economic development. I think some of these decisions were very poor and I do not believe it's in the benefit of the citizens of the city. Thank you. Thank point you. of information, Mr. President. What's, what's your point, Council My Mayor? point of information is when Mr. Guerra made this motion, did he include immediate effect? Well, this is only the first reading. First reading, yeah. first reading. So first reading, we don't have to include that. That would be according to the city clerk when we do the second reading. Davina, did you want to chime in here? I saw you with your hands up. Right? Right. So it's incorporated in the word. She said. Okay. Okay. And, and I know uh, uh, Vice President Galloway is next, but let me, let me just do this before uh, my colleagues continue. Uh, and I want to encourage, uh, uh, well, actually, I would like to uh, just uh, say to my colleagues that we, we have to really be caref careful about how we label folks, because I heard the word lobbyist, and I know that, they're, that, that the people that I saw that were in our meetings that were working with our attorneys and that were providing the fair exchange of information back and forth, they weren't lobbyists. And that's a fact, and I'm gonna stand on it like a rock. And I would just encourage all of us to watch how we label folks. If those folks aren't licensed and have licensures as lobbyists, then we don't have a right to be calling them lobbyists just because we disagree with uh, some of the things that they're requesting. Uh, Councilwoman Galloway. Thank you. I, gotcha. I just want to say for the record that um, one of the things that um, was a little bit disappointing to me is there um, was a push from certain council people in which these dispensaries will not even affect. So just for the record, like um, according to the map, I don't even think there's one zone for Councilman Mays's ward respectfully, but um, just for the record, 7th Ward has the most right now. Kevin, is that true? Right? And so um, I just want to say for the record, um, I, I, am, I, I, I hope that whatever we've done in these ordinances, Council, I'm just convinced that anybody that lives in the 7th Ward is just as convinced as I am. I just don't believe that there is that much medicinal use in the 7th Ward. I'm just, I'm not, you can laugh if you want to, Councilman Davis, you don't live over where we live. All I'm saying is that there is not a lot of medicinal use in my ward that would support the number that are already in my ward. And you can, you can like that or not like it. I am convinced, and so I just want to say for the record, I don't have a problem with medicinal users, but we don't need any more in the 7th Ward. We have plenty, and if anybody in their ward doesn't have enough, we, I'm sure that the people that are doing it over where I am legitimately can service some of your wards. And so I just would caution, and I, I'm thankful for the college culture area, but it's not just the college culture area. Thank you, Ms. Shannon, Evergreen Estates, Evergreen Valley. I know you guys are making your voices heard, and, I, and, and, and we just have to stay on the wall. We are not going to be so desperate for these speculative numbers that are making it seem like medical marijuana is the answer to all of our financial woes. And so I just want you to know that we will be on top of this and we will be monitoring it. And we will speak for the police too, because Deputy Chief Bernritter stood up and they said, we don't know how this is going to affect us. And so I'm hoping that in a year, we will assess exactly what's going on and we'll be able to articulate whether this has really been everything that they said it's going to be. 
and that our police department isn't feeling a negative impact on this, they're not the state. A lot of money is going to go to the state and maybe even to the county. But the city is not going to see that. And so I just want the police officers to know that um, as far as Councilwoman Galloway is concerned, I will be monitoring this to make sure that it is really doing what it said it's going to do. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Then we have Councilwoman Worthing and then Councilman Mays. Um, I would just like to say that I'm very happy with the merit-based application process. And um, also there is a cap. On, on the number of mar medical marijuana facilities. Uh, so, I mean, I've heard so, a, sub, a couple of colleagues express some concerns there, and I get that. We don't want Flint to be just a medical marijuana town, uh, but I believe that the ordinance does have the cap there, and it's not going to be that way. I'm very happy about the medical um, marijuana research uh, that was passed because that is the heart of medical marijuana, the research on helping patients. And uh, whether you believe it or not, this could be an answer to uh, addictions to opiates, which is a huge crisis right now in our country. And uh, honestly, m marijuana is probably going to be legal. Uh, and so those things, those sort of issues will be moot. Um, but I am very excited about those changes. There were some that I was not for, but uh, I am looking forward to see how we can implement this process, and hopefully we can make a very good case for this merit-based review if they hire uh, security, if they have something good to bring to our community, we can make sure that those get first priority. So. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman Mays? Yeah. Um to use the word, Ms. Galloway, respectfully, you have to look at the makeup of each ward. For example, I like some of the things the fifth ward has. The fifth ward has portions of downtown. I would love to have tall buildings in my ward. Me too. The third ward has industrial land. It had where Buick City used to be. And then that's Mr. Garrett's ward. He's proud of that industrial land. Mr. Garrett, through you, Ms. President, through Mr. Garrett, is AC, that industrial land, part of your ward? Do you know? No. That's the fourth ward. So each ward has different assets and attributes. Part of your ward happened to have Dort Highway. And so you got McDonald's, you got other things on Dort Highway as well. <laughs> so you got, you got a major trunk line, they used to call it. You got a major trunk line. I mean, y'all can go right around the corner and get your car fixed, and you got good businesses, and they call that zoning in some cases D5 and D6. But when you get over in the first ward, Ms. Galloway, you might have D2 and D3 and that type of zoning. So we'll see if you're right. We might find some D5 and D6 in the um, first ward. But remember what happened. When the council, and I don't know if you was here, I think I was here, but when the council before some of these folks got here, they passed a medical marijuana provision and center type ordinance. And it's about 12 or 13 or so people who got licensed. And that ordinance took them through the planning commission and licensing, and they got licensed. And some of them fell off in your ward. Three, four, five, however many, because that's what the ordinance allowed, seven. And so I don't want you to really feel bad because you got these medicine type stores in your area. Um, we was glad to get a Rite Aid on the corner of Saginaw and um, Pearson, but it was on the other side of Saginaw. We missed it. We was glad to get a Rite Aid on the corner of Pearson and Clio, but it was on the other side of Pearson and Clio, on, not on my side. We missed it. 
Now we see a Hammity Brothers coming on Pearson and Cloud, but it's on the other side. So I'm gonna continue to fight for that grocery store on the first ward side that Pastor Flynn and some others is working on with some co-op ownership. So I heard you talk about Councilman May's ward, and I'm wanting you to know, and I want the public to know, that each ward is made up differently. When the people came from the seventh ward about the video store on Court and Franklin, we listened to them for two days, but it was zone maybe D2 or D3. They had not a problem of something locating in there. So we took time with it. We did listen to attorneys. We listened to doctors. We listened to businessmen. And I appreciate you, President Winfrey. Ms. Fields will always put a negative spin, and it don't always be factual, calling folks lobbyists and saying stuff. And it take a guy like me. See, Mr. Winfrey is more diplomatic. He says, when people say stuff about lobbyists, I say when Kate Fields say it. I call names and I do stuff like that, and they think that I shouldn't do that. But I have to do that. I did that for four years, and I'm not going to change now, because I know what induendo, is that the right word, Mr. U of M? Innuendo. When people make innuendos and say stuff publicly, it can shape who you are. So my political personality and my reputation mean something to me, and people can get mad when they want. But I listen close, and I respond closer in order to protect what's going on here. Because y'all put something in the charter about lobbyists. And that's why you hear this word. See, when y'all put stuff in the charter, and people start making allegations. Can you imagine? Yeah, it is some language in the charter about lobbyists. You knew that, didn't you, Miss McGee? And when you start putting these things out there, the charter y'all got got us scared to have a halo burger with somebody because y'all put that in the charter. For years, you could go have a halo burger, but y'all charter got us where we going to use our $19,000 and buy our own Halo Burger. So that's what type of charter y'all done proposed. I'm not down with that charter. Some of it need to be amended because you, if you sit up here, you don't want to slip up and go to the penitentiary for having a Whopper. That's crazy. I think in some cases, y'all went way overboard with that. And so thus you hear Ms. Fields talk about lobbyists, and then we clean it up. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. Thank you. Councilman Davis. Thank you, Mr. President, once again. No, it's true. I'd like to speak to what Ms. Cape Field referred to as lobbyists, because I never actually personally recreational use marijuana. I, never, I don't know much about it, but why is I know a little bit about it? But I'll say this. The people that encountered me dealing with marijuana, they educated me to the point now I can kind of sit here and understand what's going on and how it operates. That show you how people, they defame people intent. And it's not right to do that because everybody I encountered from legal or whatever, they professional. Didn't nobody try to push me over to one way or other, or this vote or that vote, and certainly didn't offer one penny. But uh, another thing, too, with, uh, respectfully to uh, Councilwoman Galloway, it may not be in Councilman uh, Mays's ward, because we, we share wards, by the way. But what you don't share that we share is liquor stores, like the young lady stated. You don't share Lady of the Night, like we have. Oh, if y'all do, y'all tell me over there in the culture area. We got some things that's unique to that side of town. <laughs> we got some things we don't like. We got recreational use marijuana stores on every other block, if you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> we got plenty of that. So a professional environment would hopefully curtail that thing. 
and make it all make sense. Because this city, once again, this 2018, I understand everybody, I don't, I don't smoke it, but because I don't smoke it don't mean it's not a use. This is a whole big old world and we all living together. It's a use for somebody somewhere. Dr. Nakadar, what are you doing? I, I applaud you because somebody need it. I don't have glaucoma or nothing, but I will say this. We have to learn to move this thing and, and keep us moving forward like we're doing. And I'm done. Thank you. And, and just so, you know, when, whenever we hear that kind of talk, I, I, I'm just going to be brief. Uh, let's don't mix medical marijuana and recreational marijuana. Those are two different animals, vastly different. And, and you can be what, on whatever side you want. That, I'm not trying to lobby anybody, but let's get the facts and talk and, and, and say what they are. I'm in behavioral health, and I understand the difference between the two. Now that, and that's it. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Ms. Winfrey Carter. Yes. Mr. Winfrey. Yes. Ms. Galloway. No. Ms. Worthing. Yes. Mr. Mays. Mr. Mays. Yes, for first read. Mr. Davis. Yes. Mr. Guerra. Yes. Uh, the vote is uh, six yes, two no. Two Passes. No. Yes. Mr. President. Councilman Mays. Yeah, I would move <sighs> one eight zero one five two point one. Six yes and one no. I'm sorry. Six yes and one no. Thank you. I apologize. Proceed, Councilman. Yeah, I would move one eight zero one five two point one for first read. Okay, it's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Councilman Garrett, it's been moved and properly second. Discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? No. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes, for first read. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Garrett? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Vote well, is six yes, one no. That's on one eight zero one five two point one. What is the what is the council's pleasure on one eight zero one five three point one? Mr. President. Councilman May. I would move one eight zero one five three point one for first read. It's been moved. Councilman Garrett. Second. And properly second. Any discussion? Yeah, Mr. President. Councilman. I know I was looking and struggling for a way to our scene property on Dort Highway and other places um, that zone industrial light manufacturing and or D5 and D6 and then right behind it, even with a parking lot's distance, you got a trailer park or residential. That bothers me because of how Dort Highway is. And so I looked for an exemption and I didn't come up with it and through you to the um, city attorney and to the clerk, either and or both. If we started making additional amendments, the first reading and the adoption is scheduled for when and what time frame, and what do we do as it relates to that June 15th date? Give me some background on that, because that exemption I'm struggling with, and I don't have any language in this ordinance that kind of tips off the Zoning Board of Appeals as it relates to a variance. And Ms. Galloway, is, I don't know if it's the seventh or the ninth ward, but when you look at Dort Highway and the purpose of it, I'm concerned about that um, as it relates to that 300 feet residential buffer. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, understood, Councilman. So to address your question as to the timetable, as it stands right now with the amendments that were enacted at the last meeting of this body and first reading scheduled now and second reading scheduled for the next 
council meeting, that would be May the 14th, which satisfies the notice requirements because this is a zoning ordinance. Uh, and additionally, then because this body has moved for immediate adoption, uh, would give the existing provisioning centers that have been licensed under the prior ordinance uh, at least a month's time to get their state licensure in order. Now, I can't say sitting here for sure that they will because that's dependent, of course, on the state's uh, moving of their file at, as well, but at the very least, it's the best fighting chance that this body can give to those uh, existing provisioning centers. So amending now, I believe, uh, would, would affect the ability to give them at least a month's time, and I believe, uh, I, I can't say sitting here what the next opportunity would be, but it would reset the clock, so to speak. So I would respectfully suggest that this is, as I think has been discussed before, can always be amended in the future, and those might be topics for consideration by this body, but as far as the timetable, um, right now, we are on track to give all the existing uh, provisioning centers a month's time uh, before that June 15th deadline where they won't be able to temporarily operate, uh, but further amendments could, could jeopardize that. Um, Mr. President, I see the, the Madam Clerk nodding in the affirmative based upon what the city attorney was saying, but I will say this, that soon as this is adopted, if it's adopted, I will be circling back on amendments and we'll see what happens then. So I'll take that advice and um, continue to move forward. But just so you know, there will be some probably proposed immediate amendments and the reason that they're not coming in, when we was doing the last ones, this body, the ones of us who was here, people was tired. Some folks was ready to go. I'm the one that go long. I'll go long all night until I fall out sometime. But everybody can't do that. And so now we'll be looking at some possible immediate amendments. So I won't disturb nothing. I see people smiling who wasn't going to go long. I'm kind of filler buster and waiting on the proper folks to be seated. And so now I can kind of wind up and be quiet. But that was my chime in and that was my thought on those amendments and how fast they might come in proximity to this. Thank you, Councilman. Any other discussion? Madam Clerk. Ms. Galloway? No. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes, for first Ms. read. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. The vote is uh, six yes, one no. Okay. What's the council's pleasure on 180173? Mr. President. Councilman Guerra. Make a motion that we approve 180173. For first reading, is there a second for that motion? Mr. President. Councilman Davis. I second. It's been moved and properly second. Is there any discussion on 180173? Yeah, Mr. President. Councilman. Now this is the job description and qualifications for the director of the Department of Public Works. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that director has been in place, but we still doing the job description and or qualifications. Um, have we asked, have, does that director fit them? Because we ain't gonna be removing that director. If he don't, I would prefer amending the job description and qualifications, but that person is in place. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be an interesting one to compare and contrast with the city administrator. When, but it's a little different. You made excellent points, Ms. Galloway, as it relates to those two 90-day periods. I just got my unprofessional legal thoughts on it. And so um, this one, we have a director in place. I'll be supporting the job description and qualifications. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. 
Ms. Galloway? Yes. The vote is seven yes, zero no. Mr. President. Councilman Guerra. Make a motion that we approve 180174.1 for first reading. Is there a support for that motion? Mr. President. Councilman Davis. I second. It's been moved and properly seconded in the discussion. Yeah, Mr. President. Councilman May. You know we got two sides of the aisle, right? Yes, sir. I seen some movement on the other side of the aisle, but you were looking on this side. This is the right side of the aisle to look to. I'm just going to tell you. Gotcha. Now, this is for the deputy director position. Yes. And I'm going to support this as well. Um, I'm looking forward to these positions being full filled. And I would wonder when the Charter Revision Commission gave us this mandate to do directors in certain positions. I wonder if y'all was referring to deputy directors as well. I don't know. But um, we doing the job description for the deputy director as well. And so it don't hurt us to do additional. And so I think that by ordinance, that's where the other charter was lacking. We had some ethic ordinance and conflict of interest ordinance that, that was never put in place since the 1974 charter. If you look at that charter, it told us in the section 108 sections of the conflict of interest ordinance, it told the council to adopt and enact ordinances to further that charter language. It never really happened in my view. So I think this go round, y'all gonna see some ordinances that's gonna complement that overall document. And then I'm gonna try to get some of y'all stuff amended and throughout. You hear me, Miss McGee? I'm gonna try to get some of y'all stuff amended and throughout. But you hear that, Heidi? I'm gonna try to get some of y'all stuff amended and throughout. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Madam Clerk. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. The vote is seven yes, zero no on 180174.1. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any second reading and enactment of no, ordinances? And this brings us down to final uh, council comments. And let me just say to my colleagues, we have five minutes to do our thing, but you don't have to use them. <laughs> just to let you know, you don't have to, but you do have five minutes. And Councilman Mays, we always start over here, don't we? Yeah. So I'm going <laughs> to start, should start over here because you made that U of M comment, but I'm going to go ahead and start over there. You're going to start Councilman over here. Mays. Mr. President, could I use my time this way? Um, through you to Ms. McGee, Mr. Richardson, and Heidi, they're still here. They're serious about this thing. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know we're serious too. If there's some description and or qualifications that you think, if it's such a thing, for those members of the Ethics and Accountability Board, scratch something out because we're serious about it. And we believe that they should have some guidance by ordinance because you're giving people the power to subpoena and do. And if they were certain folks, you know, allegations going to be made. Here tonight it was an allegation of lobbyists, which we don't think was lobbyists, but they're going to have to be busy with that. And then they're going to have to deal with the same legal department we use to do ordinances and the same budget and finance, you know, it's going to be something to it. So if you think that you can put something down, they'll be calling you a charter lobbyist in a minute. But that's the way I operate. We did it with every ordinance we done did. We took input from the public. So don't just stop at the charter language. If you hear us saying that we want to create some ordinance language to go with that companion-wise, then help us. And that'll speed some things up if you get my drift. Now, if you think I'm bluffing, I'm not. 
that would help out. So talk to us away from council if you need. I know Mr. Richardson ain't scared to communicate with me. My phone number is for not just y'all, 810-922-4860. But if you're really concerned, and not just in that area, I'm not gonna let you get away with just the ethics and accountability. I'm gonna also keep talking about other aspects of it. Push for the local compensation board. Push for all aspects of it because I'm concerned with the push in one area and not the push overall. That makes me a little suspect. And so I'm offering y'all an opportunity to go a step further and help if you really are sincere, and I believe you are. I would say this, Mr. President, these meetings can go well. I mean, I got people asking me all the time, Mays, can you just be cool for 60 days? <laughs> I say, what you mean, be cool? They say, if they attack you or say something, you don't have to respond. I say, you do your politics and I do mine. I believe I choose to respond, and that's the way I'm going to probably do so but is one guy in particular asked me to be cool for 60 days miss mcgee if y'all see me be cool for 30 days 20 days 60 days you know it ain't me <laughs> so we gonna see what happens but i'm gonna say to this council let's just be cool with each other <laughs> If you be cool with me, I be cool with you, and we can take care of business. I think that I'm on the verge of five minutes because my phone is vibrating. Ms. Brown said, yeah, but I don't think it's up. But I think we need to meet. We got budget hearings, meetings tomorrow, and things is going on. So I look forward to seeing you guys all pretty much this week. I'm going to see who hangs. God bless you. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Uh, Councilman Davis. Thank you, Mr. President. So good to be seeing Ms. Shannon. Carolyn, always good to see you because you really believe in what you believe in, and that's all this community need, other people like you as well as the Charter Commission. It's so good that y'all took your time out to put the charter, and we trying our best to get it implemented. This city must move forward, and I think we're going to be all right after a while. We're getting the wrinkles out right now. And as uh, far as this body up here and speaking to the council, I think our new mission should be seek peace and pursue it. Seek peace and pursue it. If we do that and put the people first that put us in these chairs, I think we're going to be all right. Thank you. Thank you, Baby. Councilman Davis. Point Thank of you. information. You, what's your point, Councilman? Did I recognize that Mr. Santino had a haircut kind of like mine? <laughs> we, I noticed that, oh. too. Uh, go ahead, uh, Councilman Guerra. I right, just wanted to reiterate, uh, kind of as the weather gets nicer, everybody make sure they're out there getting involved, cleaning up, washing over their community. Uh, feel free, if, any, if you see anything, like I said, contact uh, somebody about it. Get out and get involved with the local block clubs. I'll be coming around uh, after budget meetings are over. I'll be coming back around the ward to be talking to people. Uh, just guys, I'm glad we might get out of here before 9 o'clock. I'm not going to say it yet because it hasn't happened, but we might. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Winfrey Carter. Well, I think I'm going to um, thank you, um, President Winfrey. I think I'm going to um, sit on this mic for the next um, 12 minutes so that we can um, break a record. <laughs> We won't get out at 9 o'clock because I'm going to talk for 10 minutes. No. Um, I just, <laughs> I would like to thank you all for coming out. Uh, I would like to thank um, those of you who are in the Fifth Ward, if, you're, if you've come out. Mr. Hammond, um, the young lady there, thank you for coming out. I would like to invite the rest of the Fifth Ward um, residents to come out. Come out to a um, council meeting. Get involved, be engaged, because that's what's gonna help move this city forward. Um, thank you, have a great night.
Madam Vice President. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just wanted to um, say to Mr. Met Officer Metcalf and to any of you that have um, a police officer or a firefighter, um, the Court Street Commons is having a um, law enforcement um, and service breakfast honoring the firefighters and the police officers from 8.30 to 10.30 at 800 East Court Street. Um, this will be their second one, and, and they just simply provide a really nice breakfast for um, the public safety um, people. And so you just come in when your shift ends or if you're, before your shift comes up, and they're going to have quiche and, and breakfast items, and they have a really nice gift bag. Just want to say um, that how much they appreciate everything that those two officers of our city are doing. And thank you all for um, hanging around with us. Thanks. Thank oh, you. It's um, from 8.30 to 10.30 a.m. tomorrow at 800 East Court Street. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Councilwoman Worthy. I would just like to encourage anyone uh, in the Ninth Ward that has an opinion on an issue, please reach out. Uh, I don't always hear from everyone in my ward, and I would love to hear opinions uh, just so I know I'm voting in your best interest. Also, uh, Wednesday is another trip to Lansing. It is uh, four years too long. There will be a bus leaving, and I'm t looking for the details right now. 9 a.m. at First Trinity Baptist Church. Uh, I do believe you need to reserve your spot uh, so you can look for that event on Facebook. Four years too long, get on the bus to Lansing. I will be there this time. I couldn't last time uh, because my daughter was ill, so I missed a whole week of council, and she's doing much better, and so I'm ready to go. Uh, water is still an issue. Water affordability, uh, access to water, shutoffs. I will never be quiet about the water issue until I feel we all have access to clean, safe water at an affordable price. Thanks, and have a good night. Thank you. Um, Councilwoman Worthing, and just so that everybody will know that we have the The, the departmental budget hearing schedule on the back tables back there. And remember, colleagues, we are here tomorrow at 1 o'clock until 3. And then uh, we have another committee, I mean, another department that comes in at 3.15 until then we go back at it again on Thursday, beginning at 1 o'clock. And then we're here until 4.30. Um, th and I want to thank all of the people that come down and to this uh, charter commission who did, uh, performed so many hours of work on this charter. I, I, I appreciate it, I understand the work that was involved in that. And I'm glad that I heard how you uh, presented tonight because it wasn't the presentation that I heard before which sounded to me as if folks were saying that we weren't doing anything. And, and, I, and I do know that the discussion, there's been some discussion amongst myself and the city clerk and the finance uh, director and uh, the legal department about how the new charter would impact or how the emergency manager, uh, financial emergency manager order, Public Act 436, RTAB, Receivership Transition Advisory Board, how that would impact this new charter because, and I know I'm preaching to the choir, the Public Act 436 preempted our city charter. And now we're rid of that. And then we know that there were some budgetary items like, for example, with the, uh, the ombudsman. Well, we didn't have any money in there for this fiscal year. So before we can bring an ombudsman on, we've got to get some money into that pot and I think that we've done that. I think we found it, and, and so I'm, I'm glad about that. But I'm really glad to hear that narrative change from you'd like to see us start to that we are doing some things. And maybe it's not moving as fast as you would like. I get it. I understand it. And then I actually think that we're going to be able to move on this 
May 14th date that you have set. I don't think that's unreasonable. I have, uh, I have two, I, I, I told people I chose my people, but I, I, I meant to say that I've got two people that have submitted uh, information to me and I'm choosing betwixt and between. So I think we're gonna get there. I think we're going to implement what we need to implement. And again, there are some processes that we need to take in, but to get to put in place before we fully implement it. But we're gonna get there and just keep, keep contacting us. To, finally, I was kind of sad to hear, I think it was Mrs. Polly that said that uh, some of our constituents don't have a way of communicating with their city government. And I would just like to say if it's any of my colleagues, which I am having a hard time with that believing because I think that they are accessible. I know that I attend there. There are six neighborhood associations that meet in my ward. And even those presidents, I had a, my habit is to take them out to uh, 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 lunch once a month. But I try my best to attend all of those meetings if I'm not having a council meeting or a special council meeting here, not because I want to get reelected, but because I want to hear what they feel. I'm not interested in election and I'm not politicking and I'm certainly not campaigning, but I want to hear what my constituents feel. And I'm not doing it to get reelected, I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do. And I believe my colleagues are the same way. So I hear you. We got you. Thank you, council people. And That's the that, I see two folks. I heard you, Councilman Mays. Go ahead. You got to talk. Yeah, to Mr. President, you know I'm willing to stay here to 10 o'clock. I know you with are. Heidi, Mr. Richardson. And I see they don't. The Charter Revision Commission shaking their head no. So <laughs> I'm ready to go this extra hour, but I yield to. Whatever I think I know Mr. Santino Guerrero is going to say, so I'm ready to roll for an hour. I know it. I know you are, Councilman. Mr. President. Madam Vice President. I make a motion for adjournment. Second. Okay, it's been moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Councilman. Nay. Nay. Okay. Presented by Spectacle Productions and underwritten in part by the Flint Pipe Fitters Union, looking for pipe fitters apprentices throughout Flint. With more information available by calling 810 720. 5243 or online at local370.com. Join us at WFOV for rebroadcasts and simulcasts of City Council and other government meetings. 92.1 LP FM Flint.